All right. <clears throat> All righty then. Yeah, that, that, that intro is killer. That's by, uh, that's by Digital Shock. And uh, that's, it's interesting. That instrumental is four minutes and 17 seconds long. <laughs> and why I use it, not because of that, because that's just uh, part of the code, but because I'm a huge fan of rock heavy metal, hard rock. I mean, I was born in the in the 80s generation. Well, I grew up anyway, uh, listening to the hair bands, Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Great White, Slaughter, Kiss, you know, all these bands that I just, I'm a huge fan of. <clears throat> and so my roots are really heavily steeped in the rock and roll generation. And then, you know, you go back to the 70s, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, The Who, uh, all these great bands. So those are kind of kind of my roots. So welcome out everybody to another episode of What's Your Question? Number 36. The keys to the universe. Three, six, and nine. On this great Saturday, there's Saturn's day. Going to go into Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, Saturn and the sun forming a symbiotic relationship of Yes and no. Fear and love. Hot and cold, up and down. That whole symbiotic relationship. And um, today's card for June 11th. Today's a kind of a special day on the calendar. It's 6.11 or 611 or the 116, which has got the golden ratio in there. Today's card is the six diamonds card to represent June 11th. This is the 32nd card in the deck and this represents duality because 32 degrees is what water turns into a solid. Anytime you see 32 and 33, you should know automatically that it's telling you it's the transmutation of ascension to descension or descension to ascension or just the transmutation of energy from one state to the next and this is the representation of the earth plane 32 and if you follow alchemy 32 is germanium and the average atomic weight of germanium is 72 which is going to give you the 72 angels and demons 72 plus 72 is going to give you 144 and that whole story so, so much more meat and potatoes to that story. But this six of diamonds representing today, I should have had this ready. Give me a second here. <clears throat> In the tarot, the tarot does a great job with giving us the pictures. Here it is. Bam. Six of diamonds. This card right here is about this reality called duality. And it's really the mother and the father and magnetism and electricity giving to those of us that, you know, are looking for the handouts. I mean, and we all are. Not in the sense of begging, but this card is all about giving, like the Robin Hood story. And it's tied to duality. That card in the, in the tarot, it's so beautiful. And then the counterpart to the six diamonds card for today representing June 11th, the spirit card or the handler card, of that card is the 22nd card in the deck, the nine clubs card. And this card right here is tied to the fallen angel story because it's tied to titanium and the titans that got thrown down to Tartaria or Tartarus. This is the wounded warrior. So when you really properly look at these uh, layers of the esoteric, it, be it tells the beautiful story that's all scripted, all written into the script of life. Give me a second here. This is why I love these cards and it's just, they're so beautiful. And they, they're archetypes. If I can find it, watch, it's probably gonna be the last card. Uh, almost the last card. So the nine of clubs, representing the spirit card of today, becomes the nine of wands and it's the wounded warrior this is the representation of the titans that got thrown down to earth 
Essentially, it's the story of human beings in general. The nine represents endings and completions, the starting over point. It represents Pandora's box because Pandora's box is 45, which is going to give you the nine. And this is the mental realm, the wands, the clubs. And that's, that's exactly what this whole day is about today. It's just really interesting. All right, let me just pop out your chat here. Let's, let's see what we got with all of you great decoders out there. Welcome out, everybody. I, I just see, man, some big names in here. What's up, Ethan Rucker? The great Ethan Rucker. Wow, what a gem of a mind you have. Christine from the great state of Washington. Pamela. Jeremiah from the Midwest. Some new names in here. Awesome. Neil, welcome out. Jane. D348. Lawrence. Lisa Lisa. Green Dragon. I am Crypto AJ. Oh, so we got some really good grid. We got some good names. Some new names, I should say. Welcome out, everybody. So I say, you know, you could have been anywhere tonight, but you decided to join in on this podcast, and I appreciate you. So I'm sending you a lot of grand vibes from sunny Mexico. That's where I'm at. Just south of Cancun. I just got done doing... Uh, the podcast uh, with Syncretism Society. And uh, got to, you know, always a blessing. I live right down the street from the great Santos Bonacci. Some good people here. And uh, I'm filling in for Danny. Danny's due back soon. Uh, the great Danny from Syncretism Society. It'd be nice to have him back. Big shout out to the Syncretism Society. We had this cool guy on. His name was Dave and um, astrologer, et cetera, et cetera. We got to listen to his wisdom. It was awesome. And it's all about really just uh, sharing and collaborating, right? With everybody in this community, which is awesome. What's up, Nigel? We got Nigel from Devil's Playground. I wonder if Harry's here. Simone, nice to have you. Uh, Ryan from Double Helix, what's happening? King Pi, a lot of new names. Thanks for joining. I, I mean, I think some of, I'm getting spillovers from Jason from Archaics. Big shout out to Archaics. Big shout out to my great friend Jordan over at Waters Above Crypto. He does his lives on Friday <clears throat> around 5 p.m. And if you're not subscribed to his channel, please go do that. Uh, he does his live every Friday and he's getting like me. He's doing like multiple hours. And he drops a lot of gems. He has his own truth. We are very similar in our truths, uh, but very humble, very beautiful, soothing voice that he has. He doesn't have a lot of ups and downs. Like I'm very animated and zany, <laughs> but he's kind of more calm, cool, and collective, different style, but it's just, he, he's just very soothing. So please, big shout out to uh, Syncretism. Um, sorry, Waters Above Crypto. <clears throat> Hadi, what's going on? Hadi in the house. Who? Hadi, the Moroccan king's cousin, was the gentleman who gave me the truth bomb of the Quran and the mighty star Sirius being tied to Allah. Now, I don't know if Allah, which is the god of the Quran, I don't know if Allah is Sirius or because it says it's the Lord of Sirius. It could just be the offspring of Sirius, which that's how I think it is. Sophia is the mother, the eye, the all-seeing eye, and then Yaldabaoth, which is Allah, would be the offspring, and it would be secondary, giving you the demiurge, ruling over this reality, and perhaps potentially creating it. It's going to be tied into the yod heh vah and the, the, those are all connected, all part of the same archetype, so to speak, and you got to have respect for these archetypes, because obviously much more powerful than we are. I mean, we're just minuscule, minority even though we all are cells in this battery we are essentially all batteries torus fields but we are working for that entity or energy How, however that looks with these constructs that we start to play around with pretty awesome
yeah, they'll be doing some cards tonight. Um, I'm going to probably do... I don't know if I'm going to do singular ones, but I'm definitely going to do a collective card pull. I don't know how long I'm going to go tonight. Uh, let's see how I feel. Yeah, it would be cool if all there was a chart of this written out somewhere. Yeah, it would be. A lot of people are, I have asked me, you know, why don't you have a book? And The average person reads one book a year. The statistics of writing a book and getting it to the masses is very slim. People like to watch videos. I like to be a content creator. I'm an artist as well. I mean, I have five planets in my third house, which is ruling the art of creativity and communication. So you tell me, you know, I mean, so I can write. Yes, I have a blog. I do blogs, but, and, and maybe I'll do some short books, some eBooks, but I'd rather do videos. People would rather watch. And the, the attention spans not even that high with the videos I watch. I see that you should see the analytics. The drop-off is ridiculous. I mean, those of you that make it to the end of the video, I know a lot of my videos are long, but you know, when you when I have an hour-long video, it's about 15% that make it to all the way to the end. Those are shit odds to capture the audience all the way through. So it's a minority. You're a minority. If you make it all the way through, you're in the minority. And I'm not saying that's the way to win, but you know, it's the minority. Yes, I will be taking some phone calls, but uh, I want to keep these very, um, I want to try to keep them for the new people, but I do want to keep them very precise. No, I don't want to be dancing around and, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've really had to, and I don't mean to be an ass, but I've really had to go through and comb through uh, my whole, you know, channel and, and watching my videos and how do I make this better, the better experience for everybody. And I've seen a lot of the calls, sometimes the calls come in and it just, it's like five minutes of like telling me like, oh, I saw this and this happened and, and that's great, but I want to be very, and I don't mean to be an ass. I'm just saying, but I'm trying to keep it to where it's going to be, uh, you know, beautiful for all the listeners. Everybody will be not get like, oh God, you know, why is this taking so long? And so I want to, I want to keep these phone calls very precise, right to the point, bam, you know, get your point and, and that's it. All right. That's, that's how I want. I want to kind of turn and burn this kind of thing. Okay. A trippy walnuts. If this is all a simulation, how do I move Trudeau to the recycle bin? If you're having to think about that, you watch too much of the news. That's just my opinion. Once you turn off the mainstream and you've sever ties with that almost completely to where like, if I watch it now, like I just watch it and observe it with all neutrality. I don't, and I know that every player that most people are pointing the fingers at and blaming and that, that those, those players, they're, they're doing their job really well because if they can get an emotional reaction off of you, well, they're doing their job. Hook, line, and sinker. See, when you detach from the energy of these people putting out their part of the movie, you essentially sever ties and then you no longer become part of their movie. They're going to get what their, their job and their car, their, you know, the karmic wheel spinning, if you kind of believe in these constructs, they're going to get what they got coming to them because it's part of their code. So I'm just, you know, I'm just pointing this out not to knock on you, Trippy Wall, and that's some just funny name, by the way. Uh, but like, we got to get over these concepts of feeding these other people. They're not going to feed you. They're just takers. They're just taking your energy. And many people are gladly, willing, willingly uh, ready to give up their energy. They're in the habit of doing it. Wake up, turn on the news, or the, and they're just giving their energy. And it's going to go somewhere, your energy, obviously. I mean, I'm a huge movie fan. So what's getting the energy of the movie? Well, obviously, the actors, the story, the director, the producer... So these energies all go somewhere. So it's inescapable. That's why when I say feed the wolf, you, you can't help it. But you got to pick and choose. So when you shut the mainstream off and turn off the dirty laundry, I don't mean I don't wear dirty clothes. If you just think of it that way, the mainstream is like wearing dirty clothes. I don't wear dirty clothes. 
Like putting on a pair of socks you've worn for a week. That's like the, pretty much the similarity be, between that and watching the news or, or watching anything on the mainstream. Ugh, gross. Yeah, Dr. Savage, nice to have you. You can watch him on my videos. You can watch a lot of people watch him on one and a half speed because I slow down. I'd like to pause like I'm doing now to get you to think. But if you just want to rifle through the information, YouTube allows you to put them on one and a half, two times the speed. Uh, AG Native, what do I know about the 36 chains of, of Shaolin? I, I haven't studied that, so I wouldn't be able to give you any feedback. <clears throat> Yeah, Jordan in the house. Jordan in the house. What is above crypto? Yeah, brother. He, he his last podcast on Friday. He, he was like, take some take <laughs> take some mushrooms, lay down on the couch. It's gonna be all right, brother. And he was speaking to somebody who was kind of like being a little bit out there with their with the comments, not being kind of in congruent with the with the vibe of the community in his podcast. <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna put that on a T-shirt, and then he's got the big mushroom there. I love it. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Savage, the planetary alignment on the 23rd, of course, the 23rd being tied to the royal star of the lion, tied to the star Regulus, which is going to be tied to Jupiter, Jupiter, Venus, Mars, Saturn. See, it's really interesting when you observe these planetary positions in the respected uh, zodiac houses, Jupiter. I feel, you know, Jupiter is playing out s several different numbers, but um, the five and the six really are, I, th I believe, tied to, to Jupiter and Saturn and in so many ways, but then you have the seven as well. But Jupiter, you know, remember, Jupiter has the all-seeing eye, the great red spot. And it's the largest planet in the solar system. So there's a lot of merit to that. And it's the king of the gods in the Greek mythology. So there, there's a lot to do with that. And, you know, if you watched my last decode on the simulation, decode it. Not, not the podcast with Jason, but simulate, just released it last night. I dropped a lot of truth bombs. I feel in that decode and Sagittarius and Scorpio were two heavy Zodiac signs involved in what I, be, I think the simulation's all about. So the alignment that just happened, yeah, that was a big deal. I think we, we, you may not have felt it, but it's all part of this construct. Karen Reem, how do you find your code? Well, start with, uh, so I came out with a video uh, going on two years now, uh, how to decode yourself. And I would, it's an hour and five minutes long. I'd suggest starting there. And then if you want to go deeper, I do have a course coming out. I do personal readings, just send me an email, but it, it start there. You can do a lot just on your own studies. Those of you that love to decode yourself, how to decode yourself is the video I would start with. 10 different layers on how to break down your life. It's a good starting point. Uh, Jake Williams, how can I discern the appropriate path in this current life of mine? Well, you're, I can tell you this with very big confidence. You're always on the right track. You're always going to be on the appropriate path. Always. Because there's no right or wrong in this reality, just waves. So when you go down and you, you go down a wave, the wave goes down, you, you, you go into what we call the negative zone, the dark zone, the bad zone. And many of us have, all of us have ridden these waves. And then when you come up and you catch the trough coming up, that's a wave that we would call good, exciting. Oh, that was a fun time. Those are the waves coming up. And it's just essentially like surfing. Like, what does a surfer do? Paddles out, looks for the wave, rides the wave. And do surfers just jump off halfway? Like, you get on this big wave and you surf. And you ride in this wave. Do you just bail halfway through? A surfer's going to tell you, you're crazy. You don't do that. No, you ride it all as far as you can go. And that's exactly how life is. When the wave is what we call good, 
You want to freaking ride that sucker because it's not going to last. Let's not kid ourselves. And then when you fall off the wave or the wave ends, like if you have a business and you did the business may go under or you may lose the business or got to file bankruptcy or so, some of you have had that happen. That's you. The wave has ended. And then you got to look for another opportunity to replace that wave. And that's paddling back out like the surfer does on the board. Instead of getting depressed and, you know, you know, looking like the, the five of cups in the tarot does a, a great job. The five is man. That's us. It's our identity. Five. That's our, that's our ego. Here's the five of cups in the tarot right here. And the, the five of cups is like, are you going to focus on what you've spilled over the wave that ended? Or you look at what's behind you. The wave is waiting for you to paddle back out and get on that wave and ride it again. But no, you know, people are in the habit of just like, like Jordan did a great job. If you haven't, if you didn't see his last live on just, uh, yesterday, please go listen to it. Cause he said, he's like, people are so tied to this avatar. Like they just, they just don't like, they're so afraid to die. They're so afraid to die. And it's not even a matter of just physical death. It's a matter of like everything else that's attached to you. Like you just hold on to it. Like you like it, like it's a piece of you. Can't remember where he had said that in his, but it was a really good, really good thing. But that's what you want to do. You want to, you want to ride the wave as long as you can. <clears throat> my email, if you're asking me, Nikki Greenfield, my email is decode your reality at gmail.com. That's my email. Let me just hold on a sec. Let me just lower myself down a little bit. I'm off center. Someone mentioned I'm off center yeah, because I'm trying to, I'm, I'm putting the cards over here. So I'm trying to keep it. Okay. There we go. Uh, just a person. Thank you for your support. Much love to you. All you fans and supporters. I'm a, I'm a fan of a lot of you great decoders, man. It's, it's all symbiotic. We all create a symbiotic relationship with one another, and it's awesome. Uh, AG Native, can you explain your logo, not the smiley face? Yeah, if you guys are talking about my, which looks like it has a cross in it and all stuff. So that's my, what's called a sigil. And a sigil in magic is with a, with a logo or a name. It's very simple. You take the consonants of whatever word. So I took decode your reality. And then a really popular way to do a sigil is you break up all the letters individually, you remove the vowels and you're just left with the consonants and then you attach them. And that's what you see. My logo, which looks like it has a cross at the bottom. That's the T at the bottom. But that is all the consonants of decode your reality all combined. So that's my sigil. That's just, it's a symbol. It's a logo besides the smiley face, which is like, you know, I got right there, but that's the explanation for that. <clears throat> oh, Kabalion's great. Uh, how can I le how can I learn to read tarot cards? Uh, well, there's a really good website called Teach Me Tarot. That's the one I refer people to uh, when I do my readings here, like when I pull cards for people. Teach Me Tarot. So. If you go to your favorite search engine and type that in, teach me tarot, should pull up. I think that's one of the most authoritative websites on the tarot. The descriptions, there's a lot of meat and potatoes to it. And you, you really, to start is, I mean, I self-taught myself with, I have like 10 books on the tarot, but you just got to know what the cards mean. I mean, and I know that's like, oh yeah, well, no, no, duh. But what is the real interpretation of these cards mean? And there are so many because you can look at the colors. It's multifaceted, but you just, just start with the basics, memorize the numbers. And there are several spreads because these cards bleed into one another. So the fool, for example, like this card right here, 
is the zero card. It's got the zero at the top. And a lot of people use this as zero and card number 22. However, you can take the 22 out as this card and it would just move the ace of wands at card 22 and it would change the placement of all the cards after the 22nd card and therefore these cards all blew, what i mean by numbers and this is just like when you do a compound number in in to measure it in mathematics like the golden ratio and pi if you type in any number you're going to get a bleed over let me let me just show all of you that when you go to this website right here called sabidium.com this measures up to two million digits any number you put into it in the string of the golden ratio and then you have the string of pi right here okay so if i just type in 35 it's a compound number meaning it's more than one it's two so this 35 right there is going to occupy digits 9 and 10. so now you have a way to look at this with it's the 19 35 is tied to the number 19 19 is tied to the word battery simulation is 35 and so we know the simulation is a battery but with why i'm showing you this is because this is the way the tarot cards work as well when you go and look at tarot cards right here these all will bleed into one another so this 45th card this represents pandora's box will actually become card 44 because it will move down if you remove the fool as card 22 then this becomes the 22nd card so it can get complicated for sure but why is this not working now hang on ladies and gentlemen oh there it is Boop. okay <clears throat> but anyway numbers are gonna bleed and encroach into one another dr savage there are so many layers but the more you learn the more that connects it's like you never stop finding more yeah that's the thing about the source code that's why i'm that's why like i have been very adamant and i'm very confident in my delivery and i say that you know it's the source code playing out it's not man can tap into it yes but when you really dial yourself into the source code and, and I, I i've come up with this meme it's like the more you observe the source code the more the code observes you back and it's like i can't even begin to tell you ladies and gentlemen how dialed into the code i am like i don't even sh if i showed you the stuff that happens in my life it's ridiculous so like i don't have to worry about picking a day on the calendar to do something when i got started in numerology when you read the books of numerology a great book's called chiro's books of numbers but it's like people a lot of numerologists when they are in the world of numerology, they'll be like, oh, you got to change your name. That's going to equal the number 23 because 23 is the royal star of the lion. It's supposedly the luckiest number in numerology. It's Michael Jordan wore the number 23, LeBron James, you know, David Beckham. It goes on and on with this 23. But really, you, it, it's just a matter of like you, your name is what you were given as your source code when you break it down in numerology. Like, you know, my birth name is Jason Arthur. My first and middle name. I changed my name, not legally, when I went in the military. I changed it to Logan. Long story. But anyway, I just kept that. But I wanted to keep Jason. So I decided to put it and move it into the Logan Jason. But in order to keep the numerology the same, I had to put the Y in there. I wanted to keep my numerology the same. And my first and middle name is 37, which as you know, if you watch my simulation, 35, when you say 35 is 37. And I was born on the 35th day of the year. It's just ri ridiculous, my code. So just remember, just respect your, like your code is very special. It's unique, it's a snowflake. And you know, those of you that have gotten married or taken on married names, it's gonna give you an extended layer of your code. <clears throat> chief keith can you decode xlm and xrp uh, well i decoded xrp in my cryptocurrency decoded 
It was a big, heavy piece of cryptocurrency decoded. XRP is the as above, so below symbol. It's the X. And really what it is, is electromagnetism, that symbol, because it has the two U's forming the way magnetism and electricity kind of create a symbiotic relationship with one another. And XRP is the ripple, the wave. And so, you know, to me, it's XLP, X, XRP army, right? Um, I mean, Jordan's the guy to, to go to to figure out what crypto you want. He's got a master, you should go take his course. Or if you're if you like X, uh, uh, crypto, go go take his master class. He, he's the guy to, to 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 tell you exactly which ones that he recommends you get and all the stuff that he offers. Larry Bird. Nice. Larry Bird, where's the number 33? Not that lucky. Yeah, well, so there's no such thing as luck. I just said that, but there's, there's no such thing. There can't be anything such as luck. You're in a scripted reality. How could, there any, how could we even possibly begin to be talking about luck? When you say, so, oh, that was lucky. No, that was supposed to happen. So there's no luck. <laughs> what is the spirit realm? Fen, that's an intro. I'm not even going to try, try saying your avatar ten times fast. Fen, the freckle belly pup. That's what is the spirit realm? It's the realm above the duality. It's it's the realm that has a symbiotic relationship with physical matter. That's what the spirit realm is. That's how I would best describe it. <clears throat> Uh, Karen, how do I book a reading? Thank you for your support. Uh, if you want me to be your tour guide, decode, just, just send anybody that's looking to get a reading. I have very selected dates in the month of June. Um, cause I don't do readings every day. I, I put a lot of energy into them. So I just don't want to do that. Burn myself out. But my email, just send me an email, decode your at gmail.com and just request one. And I will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. Tomorrow's my off day. So I, I, I may return emails tomorrow, but I try to disconnect a little bit on Sunday. I was born on a Sunday. What day were you born on, ladies and gentlemen? I was born on a Sunday. That's why I got this tattoo on here. One of the reasons. Kelly, you're very welcome. Send you use some grand energy from Mexico. Ethan, 20, Genesis 27, verses 8. I love decoding the Bible. It's such a fun book to decode. But remember, folks, it's, you know, I hope that you're out of the space of thinking that's the ultimate guide to the game. Just, just it's one of many. And let me just give you a truth bomb, maybe, or, or a synchronicity. And I didn't mention this in my simulation decoded, but, you know, in my simulation decoded, I showed how the sine and cosine wave, the measurement of the number 35, ends up becoming the number 303, tied to the simulation, which there's the notorious 33. The 303, so I was like, okay, well, what, what area code has the 303? And lo and behold, it was Denver, Denver, Colorado. And if you know a lot about that city and what's going on there, well, you can kind of put two and two together. <clears throat> well, what was interesting is that it was founded in 1947, which is the same year that the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in the Quran caves down there in the, the Middle East, <laughs> 1946, 1947. And Denver was founded in 1947. Denver's latitude, longitude. 39 degrees north, 145 degrees west. When you add those up, it's got a it's got a bleed over. 
143 slash 144. <laughs> 144,000. So who wrote it? Who actually came to promulgate the Bible? Well, I can, I, I done my research while well, the Roman Catholic Church did. That's who promulgated the Bible. And Roman Catholic just means Jew, Jewish. In, in my research, it's just, it, it's, it's kind of like, it's, a, it's another layer of the onion. It's like, oh, I'm Catholic or I'm Christian. Folks, you're Jewish. Or I'm Protestant or I'm Baptist or no, you're Jewish. Let's just, it's a duck, call it a duck. Why are we trying to play around and the origin of Christianity and Catholicism and Pro, it's all Jewish based. Has to be because the Old Testament is part of the New Testament. And those of you that follow the Bible and you're into theology, you can't have one without the other. And who wrote the Old Testament? The Jewish faith did. The Torah, the tongue. It's pretty simple, but people want to dance around. No, I don't. And they'll just, it's just, it's funny. It's just funny. I just think it's just, I just think it's funny. All right. So Jay, any thoughts on cusp birthdays? Yeah. Cusp birthdays. Well, many of us have cusp birthdays because cusp birthdays are normally around the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd. And then your son is going to obviously play into two signs. That's what a cusp means, being born on the cusp, like the winter solstice or the summer solstice or the spring equinox. Or, But I'm not born on a cusp, yet I am still qualified in that area because my birthday, when you use Vedic astrology and Western astrology, my son in Western is Aquarius but not in the Vedic. In the Vedic, I'm actually a Capricorn sun. In my rising sign, I'm a double rising sign, Libra, Scorpio. So it doesn't really matter if you're born on the cusp, the 20th, the 21st. If you are looking at both astrology charts, sidereal and tropical, you may be one of those people who are a double sign, just like me. As well as the planets move, the moon could be in a different sign. And so you gotta take all, and, and neither one is going to have seniority over the other. They both have their accuracy. If you're a fan of astrology. <clears throat> um, Stephanie, are Stargate dates higher power dates? Um, I guess you'd have to define what a Stargate date is and how you'd come to that determination. You see, once you really are a fan of decoding and the code, the source code, you realize that ultimately all numbers, they all create a symbiotic relationship and they all are special. Whether they're a prime or non-prime, they could be a, you know, a tetrahedral number, they could be a pentagonal number, they could be, uh, uh, you know, have a very powerful sine and cosine wave. But when you are a fan of decoding and mathematics and trigonometry, and you realize that there are no specialties with the numbers. They all have their, 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 their snowflake, just like you and I. Like, there's, like when somebody gets a messiah complex, and I've seen it a lot, people like, you know, oh, I, I, I was given this and I was like, okay, get in line. You know how I many people I've gotten emails from saying that they have the truth. And then if I could, if I could put them all in a room, <laughs> I'd love to be there to be a fly in the wall, put all these messiahs in the room and let them talk it out and see what they come up with. It would be funny. So when it comes down to it, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you are special. You are essentially the universe. As I showed in my illumination decoded, the iris and the pupil. It's th that's 33 in numerology. When you do those words, iris and pupil, 33. And it's astrology. But you see, you got to know what your code is. You got to know what your source code is, your blueprint. M most people don't know what their code is. They've never studied themselves. So you, how can you put yourself in that special category without, you know, poo-pooing on anybody else? Just knowing you're all new, you're in the heart position and you're special just like everybody else is special. So there's nobody above anybody. Yeah, we may have talents that are, but like some people are really good at, you know, shooting free throws in basketball, better than a lot of other people. 
Does it make them a better basketball player? No, they're just really good at shooting free throws. There are people that can play the guitar faster than others. Does that make them a better guitar player? No. You just got to know what your talent is that is going to set your standard in your life. And there may be multiple for some of you. <clears throat> Muriel 226. 226, interesting number. That's tied to radium and raw. Who stole from ancient Texan religions? Well, I don't think there's any theft going on. Everything just is. Everything just happens. We just call it that. We label, label it that. And these are just going to come down to an opinion. Uh, who wrote it? Who, who manipulated it? We call it manipulation. Who rewrote it? Who plagiarized it? We don't, we don't know. Just remember, the, the biggest standout is the kingdom is inside of you. It's not external. You ain't going to find it outside of you. You ain't going to find it there. Yet there are so many people that are, you know, searching to make themselves happy. Let me, let, me, let me give you a big piece of, if you guys are a fan of Landmark, which is, a, I'm a huge advocate of Landmark. I've done their course three times. Landmark worldwide. I don't get anything from this company. Just a fan of it. It's life-changing. But Werner, Werner Erhard, the, the founder of Landmark, it's a personal development course. He said, he says, let me, let me give you a little secret. <laughs> you ain't ever going to get happy. He says, that's a prom. I promise you will never get happy. Because you see, when you finally get to that stage of like, oh, I'm happy, then you'll conform to that. And then the shiny new toy that made you happy doesn't make you happy anymore. You're like, eh, I'm kind of bored. And, and it's like the honeymoon state relationships, honeymoon stage. The first kiss is not the same as five years down the line. Now, there could be exceptions. I'm going on averages, the majority. We, 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 we conform and then it doesn't have any luster left. Same thing with the cycle of life, the game of life that we're playing out. The game has a starting point and an ending point, and then it just bleeds into the new starting point. It's a cycle of life. It's baby to senior citizen death, start over again. When it gets to the death stage, you're in the dark age. Where it's heavy ego, heavy fear. And then the game's like, and then whatever's ruling over this game, it's like, I'm bored with that. Time for a change. Out comes the broom and the sweeping begins. And then whatever that reset looks like, and then the new game starts and you got a fresh board. And that great, that great proverb says, when the game ends, the king and pawn go back in the same box. Think about that. So you're just an avatar playing your character. Got to know what your character is all about. And when you do that, it's so freeing because then you're, you're, it's like those of you, those of you that are still doing the there-ness and meh, 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 meh. <laughs> those of you that are doing, still doing that, you're just giving your gas away. You're t the, the, the two hours that you spend looking over social media, like you got your phone and you're like, you know, how, how, do you ever catch yourself like this on social media? And like, next thing you know, a half hour goes by. And it's like, whoa, what the hell? 30 minutes. You just gave to this box. Nothing, I'm not saying anything wrong with that, but it's like you're feeding this. If you took that 30 minutes back and you said, okay, I'm going to take that 30 minutes and I'm going to go build a, a house with it. I'm going to start building my house. That's something constructive. That's something that will liberate you. Now, I'm not saying you can't be liberated by putting energy into this. I'm a graphic designer. I do all my videos. I do all that stuff. I've done it all myself. I love doing that. But you see, I make the videos to enlighten people. And I've really gotten away from decoding the mainstream because I don't want to feed it. I don't want to feed that. Because if I do a decode on the mainstream and the Illuminati and this and this group and it, like, like I, I, I'm going to, I have a decode coming out on the Society of Jesus, but when I come out with that decode, it will be neutral. There's no like bashing and I don't need to. Because we all know if we're being authentic with ourselves, 
We all know that there's duality in everything down here. So if you take the Society of Jesus, for example, who have gotten bashed and slashed and hammered and and maybe rightfully so, but when you can take that energy back, because when you when you punch and kick and scream and it's their fault and then it, you're essentially feeding that. That's what you're doing. And you're giving them your gas. It's a bad move, in my opinion. When you know how magic works, really, really bad move. So if you just take that energy back, and if you're going to talk about that, just be neutral about it. like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like, well, I know, like a shark is a shark. Like if you're in the water and a shark's swimming around, I mean, you're going to just sit there and like, hey, what's up? Some of you may do that, but most people would just book it out of there because it's a predator. And I, I had this huge revelation myself. I, I was reading about Yaldabaoth, the Gnostic Demiurge. And, and, and there was this author that said that when you stop blaming that predator, when you stop pointing the finger at that predator, it, it leaves you alone. I, I really resonated with that. So when you stop, and, and, and remember, ladies and gentlemen, whatever created this reality owns it all. It, it's got a monopoly. It's got a monopoly on the whole damn thing. It's a big Ponzi scheme. So when you're over there saying, rah, 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 it's like, you, it's like this, that, whatever created that is like looking down. It's like, really? You're going to keep blaming me? Like, you know, your duality down here. You know, you have hot and cold. You know, you have love and fear. Yet you want to continue to point the finger. You want to do the scapegoat you, because you know why? Because it makes you feel good. It makes you real. You, you feel good about it. You're like, oh, you, and really land going back to landmark landmark says life's about looking good. That's right. That's the whole premise of being a human being for the majority of people is they got to look good in front of the camera. They got to look good in front of people. Watch what you say. I mean, I gave this whole analogy of going to the dentist as a perfect example of that. If you get a dentist appointment tomorrow, and you, what's the last thing you do before you go to the dentist? Brush your teeth, floss them. You didn't do that yesterday but you did it because you're going to the dentist. Why? Because you ain't gonna sit in that chair, open up your mouth and the dentist is like, whoa, dude, do you even brush your teeth? You got food everywhere. But yesterday you didn't brush your teeth after you had lunch. Why did you do it the day you're going to the dentist? Because you don't wanna look bad. It's very simple. It's so simple. That's a, that's a basic concept. That if you can grasp that, you get, you're free. So life's about looking good. Walk around and you try to impress and not look bad. Why do you make excuses when you're late? Sorry, I was late. You know, there was traffic. Why do you not brag when you're early? Can I tell you why I was early? I'm half hour early. Let me tell you why. No, because you're not, you don't look bad. But when you're late, you're going to make an excuse because you don't want to look bad. That's the ego, folks. That's the programming of the ego. Well, see, when you go to the golden age, the starting over point of this reality, it's much different. You're at a baby stage. Babies don't give a shit what they look like. They're not primping their hair. They don't care. They got throw up on them. They wear the bibs, the diapers. They got poop in their pants. They don't care. That's the golden age. I'm not saying to poop your pants. <laughs> I'm not saying to wear, you know, sh food on your clothes, but uh, what I'm saying is, is that when you get to the golden age, folks, it's not a matter of, if there's no pointing the finger. You realize you understand or understand the, rea the machinations of this reality. And essentially when you stop pointing the finger at whatever, because essentially if you're pointing the finger at these predators that you don't like, you're, you're pointing the finger at what created them because it's controlling them. They don't get a hall pass. These organizations, they don't get a hall pass from being controlled. No, nope, they don't get a hall pass. There's no like, well, I, I, it's like, cause I, I pose this question I, and, I, and I, I, I challenge any decoder out there that thinks that man's doing this. 
that believes that there's an organic code. So here's my question. At what point do you decide that the organic code is no longer playing its role? What, when, when do you make that decision? I'll say it again. If you think man's running this code and you believe that there is an organic code, most, most decoders do. At what point do you make the determination that the organic co code is no longer playing its role? Now it's man running it. It's like they passed the baton off. How do you make that determination? And you know what some people say? Well, it's because it's bad. Well, here we go with the devil thing again. Here we go with the, the whole boogeyman, Satan coming to get you. But they, uh, come on, folks. I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger at you per se. Not you. Maybe those that, 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 that really will get offended by that. <clears throat> Apollo, Stargate, why do we get created with the poop feet? Yeah, I mean, I, who the heck likes going to the bathroom, wiping your butt? I mean, maybe that's just a comic joke. Like, I'm going to, you know, why do all the things that taste good are bad for us? And why do all, the, like, if you want to heal, you got to get the roots and the herbs. It tastes like shit. It's the cosmic joke. Uh, Pale Horse Riders, our live scripted perfectly till the beast matrix trap derails us from fulfilling it. Uh, see, I don't think there's a trap. We're, we're moving in cycles. Those of you that have awoken, you may still be daydreaming. That, that word daydreaming? Like, why do we have an, a, a, a sleep state and a, an awake state? Why do we have these? And they form a symbiotic relationship. The, the whole being awake and being asleep is a symbiotic relationship. It's duality. That's what it is. It's duality. Dr. Savage, I think there are an organizations like the Jesuits who abuse the organic code. You, how, I don't know how you'd abuse it when the organic code runs it all no matter what. I don't, how would you describe abusing it? So if you're, if they're, if you, if they said, well, well, let's do something on this date, your mind's not your own. So it would just completely eliminate that whole idea. I have un I understand. I understand how the code works. I see the code and I just, I don't even have to do anything yet. The source code is working through me. I see the patterns, my receipts, the days, the hours, my timestamps on my videos. I don't have to do anything. It just works through me. So I, I can't, I, I don't, and again, this is my opinion, Dr. Savage, but I don't think there's any abuse going on. Nope, can't be, when the source code's always playing out. I'm telling you, man, it's, just, it's, like a, it's like a marionettist. It's the Manchurian candidate. But why, why are we breaking free? Because it's in the script. It's like when you're born as a baby, when you come out into this world as a baby, there's no programming. You're neutral. That's why I suggest going back to neutrality. Because a baby, when it comes out into this world, you and I, all of us here, come out into this world neutral. And you want to go back out of this world the same way you came in, neutral. You see, when you come out of the birth canal and you're birthed into this world, you're neutral. And then over time, you get programmed with the matrix, by the matrix, by those working in the matrix. And then you form a symbiotic relationship with what we call good and what we call evil. You see, the church the church has a symbiotic relationship with the devil. The idea of the devil. Because without the devil, there's no church. There's no need for the church. If you don't have the boogeyman, what would be the point? The whole premise of the church is to be a good person 
And if you're not a good person, you're the devil. You're sinning. So you come out into this world neutral, and then you're automatically programmed by this reality called duality, and you form a symbiotic relationship all over the place. And you can't help it. But when you move back towards neutrality and just be more of an observer of the game, you're not in the court playing, the, you're not pumping the basketball, you're not shooting, you're not throwing touchdowns, you're just watching the game. Just like you're being watched, just like I'm being watched. And then the true essence of playing the game is playing your game, not theirs. When you create a relationship with these organizations that you don't like you have now have you have a silver lining to them and now you're playing the game with them when you sever the ties by stop pointing the finger by you just stop talking about it you take it your power back and now you're playing your own game more than you're playing theirs and when you get really good at it you get into neutrality you just observe and you be like oh yeah i could just i could they're just they're doing their job i don't like it but they're doing their job and then you, you you spend less time focusing on their job and then more onto yours that's where your bliss comes from so i am crypto f the church and state well, see, that energy is feeding them. You're essentially, that statement right there, you just gave them some gas. Because if you, that's a, that's a Mars hate kind of energy. Very powerful, magical spell. See, you, you, that's not neutrality. That's actually feeding the things you don't like. You're feeding it. That's just basic magic 101 too, by the way. <clears throat> So Bruce says, I think the church created Satan to justify, Satan is, I think the church created Satan to justify its, its existence. The way this game is designed down here is it's a battery, okay? You gotta, the fundamentals of this reality is we live inside of a self-contained system. It is a battery, it's an egg. And inside the egg, just like an egg that a chicken incubates, it sits on the egg and heat starts to create the embryo which is the little chick and that's exactly what this reality is all about we live in a self-contained system and we are living inside of a battery and the battery has got the positive and the negative and in religion it would be god and the devil negative and positive that's down here in this self-contained system always going to be two has to be so when you start to bring in other layers of the reality that you don't like and you start talking about it and having conversations about it and you start bashing other organizations what you have done is you're now creating a symbiotic relationship with these energies on the world stage that's what you're doing that's straight magic 101 if everybody stopped stopped pointing the finger and stopped watching the mainstream and stopped paying attention all those things would just disappear because in this construct in this self-contained system everything lives and breathes and functions off of energy exchange it's really simple that's the constructs of a battery the energy inside of your car battery energy flows between the night negative and positive through the cells the currency flows, and that's exactly how our reality works. The currency flows. The currency is flowing right now between all of us. When you end up paying attention to certain things on the world stage, you create a relationship with them, and energy flows between you and them. Now, that's just straight magic 101. So the job of the church, the job in this self-contained system was it created a symbiotic relationship with the boogeyman. It needs the boogeyman to survive. Otherwise, what would be the point? Like, the, if anybody, like, what is, what is the church, what do you go to church for? Well, I want to be safe. Safe from what? What do you want to be safe from? And then you go into an idea and a construct that's inside the self-contained system. 
But the church wouldn't exist if there was not a boogeyman. It wouldn't exist. But because of that symbiotic relationship, it's really easy. Symbiosis, folks. Negative and positive. Good and bad. <clears throat> Tammy Gardner, can we change our script? That's going to come down to an opinion. I mean, are, is, our, is our script just playing out in the now moment and that's it? Or is this script playing out in all its totality? And it has a starting point and an ending point, and then it bleeds into the new starting point. Just like a book. We run in cycles. I mean, just look at the human being experience. Just look at a baby being born. The ba a baby that's born will ultimately face death. Inevitability. And that's the cycle of life. Whatever happens in between the baby's birth and the, ba and the senior citizen's death, all of that in between is called time. During that process of time, you will sin. Time is Satan. Time is Satan because Satan is Saturn. Saturn is father time. The tester. If you want to rise above that, Stop doing the blame game. It's just so simple. I mean, you know, church, church is, you know, it has its place in this reality. Because like I've been, you know, I was raised in a really religious family. And then I've been to, like I, I, I lived in Fort Worth, Texas for a very short period of my life, not too long ago. And I went to a mega church there. It's called Fellowship Church. It was amazing. The experience was absolutely amazing. I can't speak highly enough of, of this church. <laughs> You go there and everybody's all smiles from ear to ear. Everybody's all hugging and patting each other on the back, handshakes. It's all lovey-dovey. It's all just like high vibe there. And then you get the professional musicians up on the stage playing professional music. And then the pastor comes out. He's amazing at what he does, does his sermon. It's just like the experience is amazing. What, what happens at there? It raises you. It's the job of the church is to raise your frequency. People go to church, a lot of people go to church because they don't feel good. They, they, they Essentially, you end up becoming a parasite when you go to church. The church is your host and you are the parasite. And you go there and you feed off of the church. Give me that energy. I need it. Oh, I need the church. I need God. And that's not poo-pooing on the G-O-D. Whatever that may look like. I, see, I, th I think whatever created this reality doesn't have a name doesn't have a title it's nothingness it's blameness it's it's everything and nothing once you put an idea and a construct on that and you name it and title it it's again it's changes it's now in the self-contained system outside of the self-contained system that's where the god would reside but inside this self-contained system it's part of this construct Michael Griffin, time doesn't exist. Um, well, when you grab your watch or your phone and you look at the time move on the clock, uh, what would you call that? Ta that's time moving. The clock. See, the clock on your phone or your watch, that is proof that time exists. So I play with these. I mean, yeah, the now moment is all that matters. If we all just threw the clocks away and never use them, we'd go back to the sundial. And then we would define time by that, the shadows. So to me, and this is just my opinion, time does exist. We're all time travelers. Every second of every minute of every hour, we move through time. 
and I look at my phone and I look at my watch and it moves and the numbers change, that is absolute proof that time exists. It's a construct, but it exists. That's just kind of how I see it. But again, that's my opinion. Uh, any uh, another war machine? Any thoughts on how the uh, uh, any thoughts on how the luminaries above create a script down here below in this realm? Well, if you haven't checked out my illumination decoded, Illum illumination is tied to aluminum, which is the thirteenth element. You know how big the thirteen is, and aluminum comes from the word luminary. Luminary, and so you have the constructs of the luminary bodies outside of this this self-contained system and that's all i can say about that i i don't i don't really know how this script is created i just don't maybe there's a boss per every cycle it's like you know a boss has a company and then the boss gets replaced by another boss it's very possible that the boss that ran the age of pisces lost its job or its job is over. And now the boss that's going to rule over the age of Aquarius, different boss, different luminary. These are all just ideas though, right? Miriam Kuntz, what would you say about the rituals that appeared so planned that these individuals do or how they'll come? Well, again, you know, you can tap into the code. You can, like I have often said, you know, when I do my readings, I gotta tell people what their power colors are. But maybe why I'm telling them that and why did I do a reading for them? I was supposed to do the reading for them. There are no accidents or coincidences. So when I say something, as I'm doing right here, and you hear it and you're like, oh yeah, well, perhaps your script and part of your script was being here at this very moment because you were supposed to be here at this very moment. So when you see things in rituals, and mankind is like, oh, let's make this float and that float. And let's make this head really big and let's put the octopus there. And so you, can, let's, you, you then say, well, I did that. Well, I say your mind's not your own. I can't prove that, but you can't prove me that you have control of your mind. All I can do is decode the script and show you the script playing out in the background. That's my support. So if I were to go to a court of law, if we were to go to a court, if I were to go up against somebody who says, no, I'm in control of my life, and we go to a court of law and we sit in front of a judge or a jury, what would you present for your case to prove that you're in control of your life? What would you be able to, to bring to the court? I know what I would bring. I got almost 300 videos now. That would be my support to show the jury or the judge that we live in a scripted reality. And that's how I leave it. And I stand by that. Of course, I stand by my work and research. So I, I, these things appear to be planned out, but are they really planned out? <clears throat> I say mankind's being used. So what looks like it's planned out, those are just puppet on strings, just executing the, the script. <clears throat> Uh, Magic Crypto Millions. Oh, thank you. I'm someone's favorite decoder. I appreciate that. I have so many decoders I love, man. Some of you are in here. People are awesome. I'm telling you, man, you don't give yourself enough credit, some of you. Um, so you're hosting a round table. Yeah, you can, you can send me an email for that. Uh, just give me a couple days to reply to that. Uh, I, I'm not going to agree right now i just i'll check it out want me to be a moderator i don't know what that would even be but send me an email uh am i familiar with elderberry yeah elderberry tea it's a great uh antioxidant i believe elderberry Jay Hood, what's your, thought, what's your thoughts on the multiverse? Are you talking about fractals? Um, I think it's a really good possibility that we're, there's multiverses. Doctor Strange, 
The multiverse just came out not too long ago. Um, it's very possible that we have fractals and there are every single countless possibility going on simultaneously at all times. Uh, Bruce, any thoughts on the laws of land, air, and water? Well, you're getting into admiralty law, maritime law, and maritime law basic on the water is based on the sea of space. It's, you're going to get into Capricorn and Capricorn. The reason why it's maritime law is because they're dictating the laws based upon not water per se, the sea of space. The sea of space is controlled by time. Time is controlled by Capricorn. Capricorn is the sea goat representing maritime law and contracts, the contracts. Uh, Enki, have I heard of the Ben Ben stone? I, I, that sounds familiar, but I don't remember. I can't, I don't have enough recall to tell you anything about it, but it looks familiar, but it may be something else that I'm thinking about. Uh, John Ryan, tell us about the numbers three, six, and nine. Well, take the, al go to alchemy, go right to the periodic table. Take the 53rd element called iodine. Its weight is 126.904. And then go take the 95th element, which is a americium, which is the am, the I and the am, I am. A americium has a weight of 243. Take 243 and add it to 126, and you're going to get 369. That's the I am. It's all about alchemy, folks. It's all about alchemy. Jeremiah, there won't be any starving for no seeds. You have, this, uh, you have the seed vault up in Norway, I think it is. And why I think the seed vault is located up in one of the farthest northernmost towns in the world is the, the first will be last and the last will be first. And it's very possible the reason why the seed vault is up there in the most farther northern points of the United uh, of the hemisphere it's because that will no longer be the northernmost point and you're going to get the seed vault and all the seeds are going to be in there and you'll be able to start planting stuff but as i said before don't go plant vegetables and fruits because of fear because you're afraid that there's going to be food shortages and plant them because you love earth and maybe you just want to grow your own food because it's better than buying stuff that you're, you know, hoping that it's going to be good food from the farmer's market or the store. Because if you're planting because you're afraid something bad's going to happen, the energy that you're going to put into the vegetables that you're planting is going to be based on that fear energy. Fear energy is going to be playing out through you. The body is the instrument of the mind. So if you're planting vegetables in the garden because you're afraid that there's going to be some apocalypse going to happen, the energy of fear in your mind is going to move through the instrument of your body and you're going to put it into those vegetables and fruits. Plant it because you love yourself and you love your body and you love your family and you love earth and you want to plant food because it's a healthy thing to do, not because you're afraid that food shortages are coming. Um, Logan, does anything about the number 14 stand out? Yeah, 14 is t the words time, Satan, God. They all equal the number 14. Meta, metaverse, meta, Facebook, 14. 14 is time. 14 is tied to the pH scale, yes. 14 is 3.14. It's a very important number. And it means balance. When you look to the tarot for 14, you go to the major arcana. And most of you already know, but I just want to give you the visual. Those of you who don't. I don't even know where the hell it's at. 
14. Am I missing it? Hang on. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. Don't tell me my... Oh, there it is. So 14. Right there. Temperance. The 14th card in the Major Arcana. It's the See the balance between the two chalices? This, this represents balance. So when you come down into time, into the game called life, the simulation, you want to be, you want to be neutral. You want to be balanced. Balance is key. And in order to be balanced, you, you got to make the single eye. Not th these are your devils. These will deceive you and trip you up. And, but this one right here, you close your eyes, you cut out the outside world. You stop doing the blame game when you close your eyes. It's neutrality. 14. Jake Williams, what are your three favorite ciphers? I don't really have, even though I, you, most of you know I'm a, I'm a huge Chaldean guy. <clears throat> I think Chaldean is the most important cipher um, because it hooks up with the tarot and the cards of illumination and alchemy straight up. I don't have to go as deep as I do with the other layers. So I just, I don't really go beyond, I, I like doing Greek and Hebrew. And I love my, the Fibonacci extended sequence, which obviously Derek's not going to put it on his website. So we're going to create our own website because <laughs> it's an important web, uh, important cipher, the Fibonacci. What's your thoughts on astronaut aliens? Eh. I don't really have a thought on that. <sighs> what about free will? William Hill, what about free will? Well, I'm not opposed to it. I just don't know how you'd prove it. And I think maybe if we do have any free will, it's a very small amount. You know, like I'm going to buy those shoes or I'm going to get that phone or I'm going to have this for dinner. That's about all the free will I think we have. But the thing is, folks, it's like people just... A lot of people can't tolerate the things I'm throwing out there because they would have to give up control. And that's the very one thing that liberates you. When you try to control the situation, you, when I say this, think about what I'm telling you. When you try to control the situation and it fails, the normal reaction to that is negative. It's negative when you fail at the mission that you set yourself out to get and do. So when you just let go and realize it's a big wave, this is the dragon now. It's up and down. I talked about this earlier, surfing and riding the wave. Sometimes you get kicked off the wave and you, you spend some time down here and depressed. I've been, I've kicked depression. I know what that feels like. I've beat it. So anybody that tells me, oh, you can't beat it is crazy. Because I've done it. I've beat addiction. <laughs> done a lot on working on myself. And again, if I, I mean, that, that old saying, it's pretty, if I can do it, you can do it. Just keep, you're not giving yourself enough credit. It's like, I, th I know that, you know, like, like, like I, I was working with some, some guys that, <clears throat> who were at former addicts and they were, they were big fans of AA and you know, whatever works, I've been to some of the meetings to, to support, but you know, one of the things that I don't agree with at all is going to a meeting and saying, hi, my name's Logan and I'm an alcoholic. Why would you ever admit that? You're instantly putting yourself in a box. 
What you should be saying is, I was, I, w- I used to be. But no, they don't teach that. And essentially, you create a symbiotic relationship with your addiction. Just like you do with the church and the devil and the boogeyman. And so it's like, okay, you may not be able to go into a bar because you don't have the self-discipline. You may not be able to have one glass of wine because you don't have the self-discipline. But don't sit there and say that you're this when you're not. When you've done so well at it. I just, just those concepts I just strongly am completely against. Do I think we live under a firmament? I think we live under a dome. Yeah, I think it's the cosmic eggshell. I think that life is like an egg. I think we live inside of an egg. And the firmament is the eggshell. And the sun is the the yolk, the vitalis. And the sun feeds earth. And the vitalis in the yolk, that feeds the embryo. And earth is the embryo. That's how it works. God, folks, these concepts, like I'm getting some good feedback from you. I, I would appear like you guys are agreeing. Why would you ever go and admit, and not only admit it to yourself, but admit it in front of these strangers? Yeah, I'm an alcoholic or I'm a drug addict. I go, what? Okay. Keep getting more of that. You just create a symbiotic. If people just really were taught how magic works, which should be taught in school. If you're, if you're a parent, you should be teaching your kids how magic works. Straight up 101. Everything you say is a magic spell. Basic. If I had a kid, I would my, my son or daughter, hey, listen, whatever you say, you're creating through your, your voice. It's a magic spell. That's why they say, how do you spell how do you spell your name? What's the spelling of your name? Pretty basic common sense stuff. But like That's how you're going to raise the frequency of the planet is becoming aware of these concepts. Not going to an AA meeting and admitting that you're an addict when you're no longer that. Because when you would, when you say that magic spell that, hi, my name's this and I'm an addict. Like you have, you're keeping yourself in that contract. That's, that's ridiculous. Now, again, I know the program works for people, like it, it helps them. So there are, you know, good parts to it. But that's the worst thing of that whole program is admitting that you have a pro is admitting that you are that. I mean, you can say, yeah, I have a challenge with alcohol or drugs. Like I can't be around this drug. Or I can't go to the bar. Okay, fine. So don't do that. But why would you ever Say that magic spell that you are that. You were that. That's why you're going to the meetings. <laughs> God. I know a Q, uh, GQV, it's harder than you think. Okay, if you say so. See, that's a magic spell. It's harder than you think. If you say so. How about it's just, it's challenging. It's challenging. Some people can't go into a bar. They just, they just, they would lose. It's, it's like a losing battle. They'd lose out. Okay, so you know not to go in the bar, so just don't do that, and you, that's a win for you. Pretty simple. <laughs> so I just, you know, I don't know, like I got in these long philosophical that back then it was debates about alcoholism and drugs and, and then being a disease and it's just concepts of the mind.
Yeah, anyway, church is like an AA meeting. That's right. That's what I was saying is like this mega church that I went to is amazing. And people go there because, oh yeah, I already talked about the parasitic and the host. People go to church because they need it because their life is empty without it. They say that because something and they have a void in their life. They have an unhappiness in their life. So when they go to get their food at the church, it makes their frequency go up. They get their food. Essentially, they become a parasite and they feed off the host, which is the church. You see, when you're in neutrality and you're okay to be alone, you don't need to be in a relationship, you're, you've won. You're free. You're free. <clears throat> Nikki Greenfield, how about giving your life over to a higher power? Well, yeah, it's surrendering to the source code, whatever you want to call it. I don't like, I'm not a fan of using God or Lord or, you know, or yod heh vah or, you know, Jesus or Yeshua or, or, or Mazda or Allah. I'm not, I'm not into using these constructs. I think there's a source beyond the source, and that's what I'm interested in. And it's unnameable. Can't put a tag on it. <laughs> Furry magic. I got furry magic in the house see i'm all about i'm all about uh, animals i like animals more than i do humans i live with insects i mean i in my um in my casita here in mexico um i got all sorts i got you know fruit flies are <coughs> a pain in the ass you, you know you, you buy fruit at the grocery store you bring it home i got fruit flies and they, they just they just end up migrating into my shower um you know, I, I mean, I'm clean. You know, I clean my stuff out once a week. I do my, my Cinderella duties. Uh, but the fruit, I, like, I got fruit flies and they grow and then they go in the shower and they just sit there and I'm like, I'm, whatever, you're going to die eventually, but I'm not going to kill you. There's a spider up in the window. He's doing his thing or she's doing her thing, whatever. I just, I just, I'm, I marveled at insects. I've always been marveled at ants ever since I was a kid. I don't have my medicine cards, the, the, the ants, the 32nd card, representing duality. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an animal lover, an, an insect lover, you know? And I, I'm the guy now where, you know, like every, pretty much five days a week I go to the gym and my gym is on the north side of town. I live on the beach side and there's one road that goes in between the north side and the south side, the beach side that I'm at. So I normally take the community bus or the taxi into town, which is like two miles. And then I walk back. And when I walk back, I'm conscious enough, usually not always to be looking at the ground when I'm walking. And as I'm walking down the sidewalk, there are tons of bugs, a lot of ants, a lot of lizards. The lizards just book it as soon as they see you. But the insects that are walking on the sidewalk with you, I mean, are you consciously in this space of being in the now moment? And are you overstepping the insects? I mean, they got families too. The ants, they're all working together as a unit, as a team. A lot of people don't, they don't pay attention. It's just, they're killing, you're, you're a killing machine, human beings, constantly. But you wouldn't know that because you may not be in the now moment. But that's what all life's about. It's, life is about death. It's inevitable. One day you're going to die. You, listen it. You're going to die one day. You're going to have to face that. Are you afraid? Or have you made peace with it? Really, truly. And then are you conscious of all living, living things? 
And there are many different facets to this concept. <clears throat> you know? I mean, I made the decision not to eat animals. One day, I, did, I was doing it. And I crave meat all the time. I still do. Because I have more years of eating it than I do not have. And the smell of it triggers me. My mouth salivates. But my ethics and my morals stop me from doing it. Stop me from eating it. And I would just encourage all of you to really look at life that way. And I know a lot of you, I've seen the comments like, you'll justify. And I get it because I, I've looked at nature. I see how nature is. Nature is predator prey. Animals were given to this world as food, just like nuts and seeds and fruit and berries and all that stuff. And it's going to come up to a conscious decision on what you're going to do. But if you're, if you're like me and you, you have a really strong ethical background, you, maybe you've given up that whole eating animals. But it's a, it's a solo journey, life is. And when you die, life ends. It doesn't end for all of us, but it ends essentially because you are the universe. You are. Without you, there is no universe. Now, it's a contradiction because there would be me and everybody else in this chat room, but essentially you are the universe experiencing itself. And now all the horrible things that happen are part of the construct, as well as the good things, the beautiful things. I mean, think about like, we live inside of a movie and this reality is not real. It's real to us, yes. But whatever's observing us, it's not real to whatever's observing us. It's the same thing when you turn on your phone or you watch a movie. Why do you get emotionally involved with movie or show? You get angry, sad, cry, laugh. It's not real. Because at that moment that you're paying attention to it, you can't distinguish what re what's real and what's not real. So if you take that same analogy and you go with whatever created us, which is obviously you can't even fathom what it really means to be the G-O-D. It's been through countless games, countless cycles, over and over and over and over and over. How bored do you think you're going to get if you get the same outcome time in and time out? Time again and time again and time, you get the same out. You're going to get the cycles, yeah. But in the cycle of the time of the golden age to the dark age, you have your rulers in there. During the dark age, you have a lot more of the shit storm going on. It's all like the, the bad stuff, the hellraiser. You have all that, these constructs happening. But it's all part of this. It's a big Ponzi scheme, folks. And that's why you, if you get out of the blame game, and you look at reality for what it really is, which is just a big gigantic blending of everything. It's a big melting pot. And it's just a big Ponzi scheme. The nightmare stuff, you'd be like, no, that's not, that can't be the, it's, the, it's all part of the same construct. It's everything. And when you're the creator of this reality and you've been through countless games, you're all of it. Like, oh, I'm gonna a little dibble in that. Let's see what happens if I do this. Why do, why do scientists Experiment on things to see how to progress the, hum the, human, the human race. We're, we're, we're just a big experiment, folks. We're, 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 the human being experience is, is an experiment. It's all it is. We're like rats in a cage. James says the book Secret Life of Plants shows how plants feel pain when being eaten. Yeah, that I agree 1000% with that. I've I've read that stuff, I've watched it, I've seen the machines. I no no question. That's a fact in my life. 
But if you take that and you compare it to something that is a higher life form and you, and you compare the two now, which one is the lesser of two evils to kill and eat? You see? Well, I mean, without being biased, if you put them side by side, you know, like, is you, you think that killing an animal is worse than killing a human being? Do you think killing a human being is the ultimate kill? Or do you think killing an animal is worse than killing a human being? Well, the majority of you would say killing a human being is the ultimate kill, the, the worst of its kind. Because you observe this reality as mankind being at the, at the tip of the pyramid, the highest expression. Which means you think you're superior. If you believe in that construct, you would think that the human being experience is superior to all else. Well, I mean, obviously you have room to justify that because the human being is the one that can feel the emotions in different ways than animals can in all ways and shapes or forms. We communicate in the more masterful way and create in the most masterful way. So yes, it would be the creme de la creme, the human being experience. But you see, when you put yourself at the very pinnacle of the pyramid, you now have put everything underneath you and now everything underneath you is subordinate. And I personally feel that's the wrong way to look at it. Personally, I feel that everything is equal. And when you get to these layers of consciousness of where everything's equal, it it's a game changer. But going back to what someone had said, the secret life of plants, they feel pain. Yep. But side by side, the, 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 the mechanisms of a plant versus uh, a cow or, or, a, or, or a chicken, far different. But, I, but I've, I've studied the farms. Folks, I've studied the farms beyond the scope of what people study farms and the machinations of a true farm, how a farm operates. A farm that you would think, like, how does it, what, does, what does a farm have on it? A true farm. It's got dogs and pigs and chickens. It's got eggs in the hen house. The rooster crowing at sunrise. You know, it's got the shepherd there. It's got the sheep. They all play their role in this ecosystem. And when you take a piece out, <clears throat> when you take a piece out of that ecosystem, it changes everything. So the, the ugliness of this reality, and again, this is my opinion, but the ugliness as we call it that, now these are ideas, the ugliness of this reality, it is a, it is a, is a system that is built on predator prey. It is built on a system of survival of the fittest. That's how it's built. They did a study in Yellowstone National Park. They took the wolves out, a natural predator, and it just screwed everything up. And then they introduced the wolves back into Yellowstone National Park and bam, the ecosystem, not only did it go back in order, but it started to thrive. So, <clears throat> you know, why did, why is veganism so big now? It's huge. Well, it's part of the script, right? There are a lot of people that consume animals and there's an overabundance of that causing perhaps a lot of chaos. And in order for the earth to balance itself back out, it needs to move back to balance again. Just like the wolves get put back into Yellowstone National Park. So when we go back to the golden age and it's a fresh start and maybe we're using our telekinetic powers and maybe we're just, you know, we're, we're perfect human beings again, that cycle will, it will end in the demise of mankind. It will end in time. Time will decay. So, you know, the great Santos Panacci did a great video on Sirius and how it's in a binary, these concepts anyway, how it's believed to be in a binary system with our sun. And when Sirius 
Here's my little, here's my little son. When Sirius moves away from our earth, when it, our sun, when it moves away, we move to the dark ages. When it comes back, we move to the golden age. But when it goes away, you get into the dark age. And I think that's perhaps where you get the flesh eating and the killing and the Kali Yuga and the craziness. It's all cyclical. So I feel that like veganism is here because with this, uh, the natural route of evolution, when Sirius comes back to the golden age, to create the golden age, we probably won't even need to eat anymore, which would, that would be a blessing. But I feel like these concepts are, you know, the way it works. So, but that's just, you know, my take on it. All right, let's, let's talk about some dark shit. I love it. I mean, that's why dirty laundry, that's why the mainstream news, that's why the corruption is, you know, is because we're, we're in the dark age. It's, it's, we've serious has gone so far away, but it's coming back. Do plants have a nervous system? Not the same way we do. Plants, vegetables, and fruits, they don't operate the same way as... The human being is the most complex system. So again, it's at the very tip of the pyramid. But you see, if you are in the space of you think you're superior to everything else, well, then you haven't figured the game out yet. When you start to treat your, your animal, your pet, your furry, and, and many of you do this, you, you let them sleep with you, they sleep in the bed with you, you let them lick your face, you let them do a lot of things that, you know, <laughs> are kind of funny in a way, that, that's you loving the pet. And then you become one with the furry dog, cat, whatever. Like I, I could never have a lizard in my house if it was in a cage. Cause why would you, it's like you being in a cage. Do you want to be in a cage? Like I see lizards all the time. I'm walking down the street and they just, they, their senses like they book it. As soon as they see you, bam, they're off into the woods, the little lizards, chameleons, whatever. Like I could never take that and put it in a cage. I just would feel guilty. I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't, I don't want somebody putting me in a cage. It's like, you know, having a, a, a furry, like a dog or a cat, like, you, you know, I mean, you may have to put them in a kennel or crate train them or, but most of you that have a pet, you probably let them, they roam around the house just like you. They're, they, they're one with the family and they have unconditional love. Pets do. That's the one thing that human beings don't have by default unconditional for their owner maybe not to a stranger <laughs> but to to their owner those of you that have bonds with your furries unconditional human beings don't work that way there's conditions because you're at the hot when you there's 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 a price to pay by being the highest on the pyramid there's a price to pay you don't just get the red carpet rolled out and unconditional love is, is your default. No, doesn't work that way. <clears throat> uh, what do I know about Alcyon? 
Tara 137. Uh, nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Divine Light Hazel, for your support. Sending you some love from Mexico. Uh, how far are we to the golden age? I couldn't answer that. We, we could potentially have many years ahead of us of more of the shitstorm. And then see, the thing is, I'm, personally, I'm going to suggest you got to make peace with that. Don't have any expectations. Because if you have an expectation of like, if I, if you, if you have someone, someone that you really trust has said, yeah, five years from now is going to be the reset. And you banked on that. And you, you then take that construct and you revolve your life around it. That's troublesome. See, when you can just live in the now moment, enjoy the now moment and that time frame, and just try not to plan too much, just, just roll with it. Because if we are headed into a darker age, which we could be, we could be heading into a very dystopian world, and there's nothing you can do about it, what are you going to do? You're going to get mad, angry? just going to create a lower frequency for you and those around you. So I just don't know. I just don't know how much more time we have. Just enjoy the moment now. Eckhart Tolle, The Power, now that book. Great book. Uh, see, Lacey, I miss our orange sun. I, I don't know what you mean by that. I see the orange sun all the time. Sunset. Here in Mexico, I see it. I, do you not see that in your part of the world? I'll still eat pizza. I am crypto. Whew, yeah, that's my favorite food. I don't eat it as much anymore, but man, if I had a weak spot, it would be it would be pizza. Phoenix, uh, Ethan, what is the Phoenix weapon is the same as kill them all, let God sort them out. And 102 is, is Rhodium Pandora's box. The Phoenix weapon is Pandora's box. It's just a, a different, a changing of the guards. Uh, what's up, Bobby? What do I think about the sun aligning over the pyramids during the full moon? Well, I mean, it's going to get some energy, that's for sure. I just think it's not instant. So these lineups of planets, I think it's not a scratch ticket scenario. I think it's, it's going to make way for something. So it's going to take some time. Vegan pizza, cashew cheese, it doesn't have to be bad. I have yet to find a cheese that has replaced mozzarella. So, I mean, I've tried some, and I'm open. I, I'm probably, you know, if, if I do end up moving back to the U.S., and I get back into some, some pizza again, I, I, that's one of the things I miss. I, I, you know, like Jordan over, I, he's probably not here anymore, but Jordan over at Waters Above Crypto, we've had conversations about pizza, and he was over in Italy, and he said that over in uh, uh, Napoli, Italy, which is kind of where pizza originated from, some say. He said that um, when he was over there, the, the best pizzerias, uh, the, they based their best pizzas off of their sauce-only pizza. No, no cheese. And man, I know, I like my mouth's watering just thinking about having dough and sauce <laughs> with some olive oil maybe and some garlic spread on there or something, but... I'm, I'm all for that. Like, I don't need to have the cheese. I just like the bread and the sauce, to be honest. But there's pizza here, Miriam Love. There, there's a place right down the street that these the couple guys from Italy, actually. And it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. But I don't really eat out here, so. 
Um, but if, if I had to pick a pizza, uh, no offense, New York, but I, I'm a Chicago fan. I, I like the, I like the thick, I like the, like the, just the mm, Chicago baby. <clears throat> but I love it all. I could, I'm not just, I'm just a huge freaking pizza fan. Uh, uh, what's my thoughts on, on your birthday and destiny? Well, it's just all part of your source code. I don't really know what you mean by that. Uh, Alex, what's going on? What's, what's my opinion on the 256? The 256 is tied to the 100. 256 is tied to the computer and the 256 bit. And the 256 is tied to the element fermium, the 100. And it could be possible that the 100 first populated the earth and then the 200 came down after them. And then you get the three, the thirty-three percent. Then you get the story of the th a third of the angels came down. That'd be three hundred out of a thousand. But the two fifty-six is most definitely tied into fermium, and the one hundred. Two ten. That's going to be tied into the element, ro uh, radium. I'm sorry, radon. Excuse me, radon. Two ten. And you're going to get polonium in there as well and astatine. So it's going to be a blend. I'm just thinking out loud. Nothing wrong with cheese. If you're a vegan, it's got to be vegan cheese. But again, I will say, folks, I just hope you have come to your consciousness where you're not pointing the finger at somebody who's not a vegan. And you don't even, even if you're at the consciousness, and I'm talking about the consciousness as where it's not that you're, you refrain from saying anything. What's going on in the little noggin ears? What are you thinking? A lot of you don't say what you really think. That's not being authentic, is it? Well, when you're really at a high state of consciousness, the thoughts will be in line with the instrument of the body. It's like you have no problem saying it to somebody. So if you, if you, if you want to be really raw, like, you know, you wouldn't be going around saying, well, you're wrong because you're not vegan. That's not a high state of consciousness. What do you mean I'm wrong? I'm not on your journey. No one really knows what happens at the end. No one knows. So you judging is, I mean, that's just as bad as the person that you're judging against who you think's doing wrong. So the best thing for you to do is, is to get into neutrality and just observe other people be like, Oh, they're just them being them. So I like, I have a, like, I don't have a, I shouldn't say I have a problem, but like people that say, call people sheep. It's like, dude, you were a sheep before. And here you are pointing the finger, calling someone a sheep. Like really, you're no better than the sheep that you're calling a sheep. And we're all sheep. You got a shepherd. If you want to really be duck for duck here. But if you're a vegan, please don't go around saying, well, you shouldn't eat meat. Just you, you can go push, push veganism. Just be the best vegan is vegan. You can be, be a good candidate, be, be a good example. But if you're, if you're one of those that point the finger and say, well, you shouldn't be doing that. Well, you've already lost the game. That's not the way the game works. Life is, works in a gradient measure. And a gradient means, you know, from white to black or black to white. Leveling up to win the game. Stages, levels. And what your level is at may be different from somebody else on how to win this journey for them. Because if we're just all playing out our fractals and we're, as people say, oh, I'm an old soul. Well, if you're an old soul and you're looking down at somebody who's not an old soul and you're, and you're blaming them, you're not an old soul. Because if you're an old soul and you're wise, you would realize the way this game works is not doing the blame game. It's not doing the blame game. It's, and it's certainly not judging people for their journey. Because it's all fractals, folks. <clears throat> How do you know someone is a vegan? They will let you know. Yeah. 
I mean, some of my closest friends are, are vegans. I just, I don't know, the whole, the whole concept has is, is got a lot of negative to it because if someone's not, they, 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 they push magic on it, like, oh, they're vegan. And so, we gotta just stop with this. Just like, who cares? Who cares what you eat? That's you. I don't wake up and have to, I'm not sitting there doing the airplane with the spoon. Open your mouth. Brr, here it comes. I'm not doing that to you. <laughs> That's silly. You can do whatever you gotta do. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to set the example and be the best little devil that I can be. That's my job. And it will make a ripple. And it's making a ripple. But I'm not keeping tabs on the ripple. I'm not measuring the ripple. Don't care. But yeah, I mean, Malibu moon, each path is different. That's right. It, it just all that matters is your path. That's it. <laughs> it's just your path that is what matters. If you can just observe what somebody else is and say, okay, without passing any judgment, no judgment. Because a lot of you that are vegans, you used to eat meat. Then you gave it up. So you've been there, you know. But certainly, again, it doesn't mean you're right and they're wrong. And that's what, how a lot of, and you know, it's just so funny because like uh, in religion, let me just change my music here. In religion, when I was, when I was growing up, as, as a Jehovah's Witness, it was, you know, and I don't regret any of it. And it, you know, it does have a lot of beautiful parts to it. But I just remember growing up, it was like, I was programmed with this. My life is the right way. And you and anybody else outside of my life, that's not doing what I'm doing. They're wrong. And it's just so interesting that that concept is in now in labeling how we are as people as a species with the food that we eat. It's, there's no difference. I know a lot of vegans, they'll, 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 they'll look at somebody who's not and be like, well, you're not a vegan, so you're not a good person. There's no difference in saying, well, you're not, a, you're not a Christian, so you're not a good person. You're not saved. You didn't get baptized, so you're not, you're not going to make it. It's like, dude, there you are going judging again. That's what we need to stop doing. God, it's crazy, man, this world that we live in. People think they're just so on top of the world and I don't do anything wrong and I'm so spiritual. Oh, I'm so spiritual. Yet they're sitting there judging other people. Man, it's crazy, this world. That's how funny this world is. Connor Powers, as a decoder, why do you not talk about numerology very often? Well, have you watched any of my th- almost 300 videos? <laughs> I, I talk about numerology all the time. I've done uh, the life paths, uh, soul urge, the heart's desire. These are all going to be part of my course, but I've done the life paths. I've done them in many podcasts. You just haven't been here when I've done them. But... If you guys want me to talk about life paths, let me know. Uh, let's let's see what we get for comments. Some of you are smoking some cannabis or consuming it. Uh, All right, so we got some life paths. So I'll talk about the life paths in a second here. Uh, Let's just finish with the nutrition part. Crypto Lalo. What are my thoughts on the raw primal diet? Very simple. If something works for you, and you wake up and you're like, wow, I feel a difference. Oh, my skin's better, my hair's growing in, or 
You know, if things are, if you're leveling up with the, the food regimen you're on and it's working for you, keep doing that. But remember, man, what may work for you may not work for me. That's why like uh, my opinion and my suggestions, they may not be for you. Um, did I ever have Jason Q on my show? Uh, I have not. Um, the only, and I don't, I don't, I don't know him, but he, I know he focuses on the mainstream or he has, is, does he not focus on the mainstream? I'm not really into that. Like breaking down the mainstream. I'm just, I don't want to feed it that much. I feed it enough doing some of the decodes. So I know, I, you know, I know, he, I know he's, some people have said he's promoted me and Jason Archaics and maybe even Santos and stuff like that. And, and uh, I, I, I'm really appreciative of that. But again, I don't, maybe you can clarify I am crypto. Um, but doesn't he deal with mainstream? I, I don't know. He talks about everything. Okay. See, I, I, I'm really hesitant on uh, talking about mainstream. Like, I, I just, ah, it's just... Just when you know how this game works and how magic works. And I, you know, and again, these are, everybody has their own individual journey, right? So we can agree on that. So some people incarnated into this reality to actually play deep into the game. They, 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 they incarnated to play deep, then deep layers into the game. Like they came and their job was to expose this and expose that. And, and I've done my fair share of that, right? But my job is to show you how this game works. That's my main responsibility. And it's like the tour guide. And I'm, I bring you to the amusement park, which is life. And I show you all the rides. Oh, you see that one over there? Yeah. It's like, and I'm, but I'm not going to tell you what rides to get on. So that, that, that's my position. So it's just challenging to hook up with somebody who's heavily, deeply on the court playing the game. Because I'm not. I'm, I'm more on, I'm, I'm showing you how the game works. And I feel like if there's a way to get out of this game, it's not to play it. And this is just an opinion. It's just a possibility. It doesn't even mean that what I'm saying is true. But again, I'm telling you is that you come into this world neutral. Why would you not go neutral to get out? Right? Which is lukewarm. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, Kim 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 Shady has been a real asset. She's uh, she has a lot of followers and she's taken a liking to the content I've been putting out. So big shout out to Kim Shady and her um, her subscribers. If you've come over from from her, uh, a big shout out to her because she's definitely um, been sending over a lot of people, which is great because if you've been sent over by another platform. Uh, again, folks, you know, if you're really in the now moment and you look at life, everything that's happening to you is supposed to happen to you. And there are no accidents or mistakes. Everything just is. And maybe, just maybe, you're here right now because you're supposed to be here. It's as simple as that. All right, let me get into some, let me, let me get into the life paths. Someone had asked, who was it? Um, damn, so many comments. Thanks for everybody for joining here. I can't remember who it was. Someone was asking me about life paths and numerology. So let's, I've done it many times, but let's, let's go through it again. So we had a lot of new names here. <clears throat> okay. So those of you that have 
Now, I want to be very specific as well in numerology because you probably have never heard this before if you're a numerologist. Most numerologists don't teach the same things that I teach as a numerologist. I look at everything. And every single one of you will have multiple life path numbers. What I mean by that is that if you take your birthday, let me just show all of you this, just so you could see. So if you go to Derek's website, just to use it, and you type in your birthday. So for example, I'll use mine. Here's my birthday. You just type these numbers in. February 4th, 1973. What you're going to get is two numbers, actually three numbers. You're going to get the two, the six, and the eight. The 26 is my compound life path number. It's going to be a combination of the two and the six. And these numbers add up to become the number eight. So in numerology, the basic fundamentals of numerology, I'm going to be considered an eight life path. My birth card is the eight. I mean, this is my script. But it's the 26 that I really serve. And it's a combination. And you can break it down even more. You can go with two is Taurus, six is Virgo. And you can look at those concepts. But it's the 26. And then it's going to service the number eight. So there are many ways to look at this, not just from a single digit perspective. Let me give you another one. Just, I'll take any, any birthday. January 14th, 1965. That's going to be a 27 slash nine. So what you can do is you can go to this website, right? You can just go to a, a let me just go to a oh, typical Google. Right here, boom, okay? The most standard search there is. And let's say you have this 27 slash nine life path. Well, right off the bat, nine is what you ultimately are gonna serve. Nines are the humanitarians. I'm gonna go through these in a second, but what you wanna do is you wanna get your com compound number, it's a 27. So then you go here to your favorite search engine, you type in 27 affinity numerology. This is a good basic website to go to. Here it is. It'll come up in the first one, and there's the 27. Okay? And you're going to read this. You're going to read all this script, and you're going to start to take notes of what it means to be a 27. And if you scroll down, it does a good job because it gives you the graph of the 2 and 7 combining to ultimately give all its energy to the number 9. And then you can go here and read about the number 9 energy and... So there you go. There's your life path. That's how you do it. Let me give you one more example. Let's do a birthday. March. Let's do Santos. 24th, 1963. Here's Santos's birthday. Santos Bonacci. March 24th, 1963. He's got the 28, which is going to be leading to this right here. The word architect is 28. It's kind of interesting, right? But he's 324-1963. He's going to give all his energy to the 28 slash 1. So we go back up here, and we go back to Google again, and we put the 28 here. Affinity numerology. Here it is. And then you can go read about the 28. What does it mean to be a 28? It's going to be the blend of the 2 and the 8. you got to know what those numbers mean. They're going to give all their energy to the number 1. There it is. And you can just click on the number 1. And now you have the meaning of the number one. Okay, it's really simple. That's how you do that with, with the life path. So when you get your double digit and your single digit, I'm just going to go through the single digits. I'm going to do it with the tarot. So give me a second. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take some phone calls. What time is it? Oh, shit, it's okay. Okay. I'm going to go through these quickly, and then I'm going to take some phone calls, and then I'm going to do a collective card reading, and we're going to call it a night. And I know it's not going to be that simple, but nothing simple with my podcasts. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> just going to use the tarot cards. 
nine. It's the one. Uh, seven. Six. Four, three. Hang on. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, two. So I'm missing eight. Hang on, I'm almost there, ladies and gentlemen. This should be good. You should be doing this for the people you know. Your partner. If you're if you're married, you should know what your life you should know what your partner's life path is. Should be standard. You should know what their life path is. It's the way they're going to show up. When you know your partner's code, you you'll be less and less judging their code, judge, judging them as a person, because you'll realize that it's just them being them. Okay. All right, so let me uh, let me just answer this question. Just one guy, where can you score some cannabis in Puerto Morelos? No idea. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> just ask a local. Ask a local. It's, it's, you can get it anywhere here. You probably want to go down to Playa del Carmen and get it anywhere on the street. Okay. All right. So here we go, folks. The life path numbers according to the tarot. Okay. Here we go. So we have life path number one. Those of you that have a life path number one, Santos Bonacci, for example. Ultimately, he has a life path number one. It's the magician card, the first card in the tarot. This magician right here is the leader in life. The, the magician spinning, slashing the magician, uh, I mean, um, pushing magic. I mean, we all do it, right? You're all, essentially, you're all going to have this in your coat. But your sole contract is to be a leader and to get everybody to behind you. Like, I'm going to lead the way. The challenge for you, One Life Paths, is to get rid of trying to be so competitive. Get rid of thinking that you're right and everybody's wrong. That's the challenge you're going to have. Because it's the first number, numero uno. So you're going to think your way is the only way. And many of you will think that no matter what, even if you're not a one life path. But when you're a soul contract life path, your job is you're the seed planter, the trailblazer, the fire starter. If you were in a mastermind group, you would be the one be like, hey, hey, Logan, what do you got for ideas? And you start to throw your magic out there. Life path number one. Life path number two. Those of you that have a life path ultimately down to the number two. It's going to, you're going to be that dependable, loyal person. You're going to be that person who is working good with people too. You're designed to work with perhaps money, finances, dependable, Taurus energy. The one is Aries energy. Those of you that are life paths number one, you're going to be Aries energy. The leaders, the ram. So you can bring astrology into this. Two life paths, Taurus, the bull, the bull horns, dependable, loyal. People rely on you, right? Structure, and then you're the high priestess. So you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have the oracle behind you. The two life path. Okay, you're dealing with just you and something else, creating relationships. The two life path. Number three, those of you that are three life paths, you get into the Gemini energy and the two twins, Castor and Pollux, and now you get into the Empress. What is the Empress's job? To create things. What is the third house of astrology? The house of creativity. The house of communication. It's the Trinity, the triangle. Dealing with the mother. And the mother gives birth to the two twins, Castor and Pollux. House number three, life path number three. Life path number threes are likely going to uh, gravitate towards the creative arts. They're going to gravitate towards... Maybe being an artist, maybe being a musician, a baker, an artist, a sculptor. Three, 
maybe somebody who's very influential on the world stage with the way they communicate their magic spells. And if you have a, a three life path, if you have a two life path, you want to look at your second house. If you have a two life path, what's in your second house? Are there planets there influencing that? It's going to influence your life path. If you have planets in your third house and you're a three life path, what are you giving birth to? It's going to influence you even more. And then with the first house as well. Those of you that are life paths number four, you're going to be dealing with the house of the cancer energy and the moon. And do you want to know where your moon placement is? Those of you that have life paths number four, you got to check out where your moon is in your astrology chart. That's going to affect your life path. But it, it's dealing with the emperor, the king on the chessboard. Three is the queen. The queen and the king. This is representing the box, the cube, the square. Those of you that have four life paths, you're here to build something, a structure, stability, mental or physical, square lines, architect, architecture, the builder, the four, systems, sound systems. Okay? Those of you that move into the five life path, if you end on the five, it's the house of Leo the lion ruled by the sun. You want to see where your sun's at. If your sun is in your fifth house and you have a five life path, whoo, that's a lot of energy to deal with. Five is the busiest number. That's why we have five fingers. It's the busiest number. Essentially, five is the pentagram, which is man, the five points. And it's dealing with the ego and the identity. Those of you that are five life paths, you're the hero fint card. The dictator. This is the, the card representing the church. Well, you're the church. And you five life paths are the adventurers. Like you're the ones that'll raise your hand and say, I'll try that. I'll go do that. You got to keep busy. You got to be active. You got to try everything. See, if you're with a partner and they don't get your life path and you like, they, maybe they're, they're somebody who's really serious that likes to stay home a lot. And, they, and they're with a five life path that wants to get out there and experience everything, you may have a lot of, someone's got to sacrifice. And that's why knowing what your partner's life path is, is so valuable. And then they know yours. Because if you're a five life path, you're like this uncontrollable child, man. You're like this person who wants to get out and try everything. And that's somebody who, and, and someone who likes to stay home a lot and you know, endeavor in those kind of traits, they may get annoyed by, by the five life path. Because it's like very, it, could be, it can be very extrovert. Sits in the middle of the dial pad. So it, it takes a person to know these things. That's why we're moving into the I am, the age of Aquarius. I know thyself. When you know yourself and your partner, you will have much better experiences in life. Because then you don't have to tolerate anything. You just have to know your partner. And you'd be like, oh, that's just them being them. And you're like, oh, I don't feel like going with you on this trip. Go with the girls or go with the guys. Those of you that are six life paths, it's the first master number. It's tied to the um, hexagon, the six-sided polygonal shape, the star of David. It's the first perfect number in mathematics. I think I just said that. And in the sixth house of astrology, it's going to be the, the house of health. It's going to tie to the third eye chakra. And it's the lover's card. This is Adam and Eve, right? This is creation. The, the last day of creation in theology is six. So it's a master number. So those of you that have six life paths... I feel like you're here to leave some kind of legacy behind. Some kind of legacy behind. Then you want to see what's in your sixth house. If you have a sixth life path and you have planets in the sixth house, well, you got a lot of energy to deal with. If you got Jupiter in the sixth house, that you're born to meditate. Okay, you should be meditating. Standard. And then get into creative visualization. What are you going to leave behind as your legacy? And maybe if you have Taurus over there in the sixth house, you're probably going to have a family. Those of you that have seven life paths, the crown, you're the great analysts. 
of the soul contracts. See, the crown analyzes everything below it. So all the chakras, let me just show all of you this. This is kind of important. So when you look at the chakras, right here, those of you that are seven life paths, you, you, you represent the crown. And the crown is the great analyst. So those that have the soul contract number seven, you, you are the analysts of the crowd. You are the ones that will, you know, the, the mystics, because they, they, they look at everything below them. And here are the six days of creation right there. And then the day of rest and reflections, day number seven. This is the, this is the life path number seven, the crown. So you're, the, you're these analysts. And it's this card right here, the chariot, because, and it deals in duality. You're analyzing duality, and the chariot is the fast moving energy. So you have these, all these thoughts, and you got to control that monkey mind. But those of you that have seven life paths, you're interested in the mystical arts, you're interested in mysticism, the occult, primarily, probably. You're probably really good at um, going to a restaurant and being a food taster or a wine taster you could pick out song you can pick out songs on an album on a new album that comes out before it ever comes out you're really good at that stuff like you know what's going to be singles on an album maybe you know you make a good movie critic because you're the analysts you analyze everything from the top down <clears throat> those of you that are life past number eight like myself you essentially are the tourist field you are the hourglass you're here to deal with power, which is why it's the strength card. Taming the lion. There's the infinity symbol right over the head. But those of you that have the eight life path like me, you're here, you're here to deal with power. It can go both ways. You can use the power for service to self, and you can amass a fortune if you want to. Now, there are going to be exceptions to that because you got to look at your astrology chart and you may have a heavy humanitarian chart. If you have a lot of planets in your ninth house and you have an eight life path, you may want to amass a lot of money and become a philanthropist. Or There are many layers to look at this. I know it well because I'm an eight life path. But you're seeing with what I'm doing with it. But the eight life path is the infinity symbol. It contains all the power, all the, all the sands of time. And you have to learn how to deal with that. Dealing with authority and power. That's the eight life path. And then the ninth life path is going to be the humanitarians. And the humanitarians are the hermit. Those of you that are nine life paths, well, you're, you're probably going to be somebody who deals in some kind of humanitarianism. And if you're not, you may want to scratch that itch. But it's, you know, and you may be uh, really, uh, you know, moving towards wisdom and knowledge. That's how you become smart. So essentially, the nine life paths are here to deal with their intelligence and to deliver it to the world. When you're using it for the constructiveness of the forward progression of our planet, you're doing it for the benefit of mankind when you're using it for service to self you could be you could use it to build a, a company and be a ceo or something like that very intelligent people the nine life paths i have dealt with a lot of nine life paths and the majority of them if not all of them are really here to service humanity and they feel it in their bones okay and then we get into the you know these other constructs the 11 the those of you that have the master <clears throat> life path number 11 Okay, you're, you're t tied to the card, justice card, card number 11. Now you're, you have two life paths to deal with. You, those of you that have these 11, 22, and 33, the 11 is going to reduce down to the oracle and the high priestess. So you're probably going to want to deal in the occult and all these, you know, the, the mystical art platforms being the oracle. But what you're going to do with that is you're going to, you're going to be that great judge. So the 11s are, are, are going to probably heavily be invested in the occult and the mystical arts and the quantum realm and all that. Big shoes to fill, right? But essentially you have two life paths. 
the 11 and the two. And then you get into the 22. Those of you that are the 22s, you're the master builders. That's what the 22 means. Um, let me just show you from the tarot. Now it can be the fool. Those of you that have the master 22s, it can be the fool. Oh, there's the fool. Or if you don't use the fool as card 22, so you can have the fool, right? So you can just be vicarious and live through so many different things. Master builder 22. 22 is going to service the number four. So you're going to be this one as well. Those of you that are 22 life paths, you're going to have this as your ultimate ruler. You're going to be the king on the chessboard. What are you going to build? Don't let it go to your head. Like, oh, I have a master number. So doesn't make you any better than the single digit numbers. Okay. But you're ultimately going to reduce down to the four and you're going to be that you're going to build something master builder of structure. And then if you go to the 22nd card without the full the ace of wands, this is the card tied to time. So the master builder in time is what the 22 means the master builder in time of time. And this is the idea card, the origination of ideas, the ace of clubs, the ace of wands. So you're full of amazing ideas. Your nemesis is not executing on those ideas. That's your nemesis. For fear that you will fail or you will be judged by your actions, the 22. And then card number 33, depending on how you observe it, let me get that one there. Those of you that have the master 33, You have the 33 and the six. So, and this can be, I'm just using this as a construct. This can be card 33, the Knight of Wands and the Jack of Clubs, the Knights that go into battle. 33 is the super creator, so to speak. Doesn't mean you're gonna be more creative than other people. Just means you have a, a double three and it's gonna service the six. So you're gonna go to the lover's card. You want to look in your sixth house. So you're here to you're here to be creative and to communicate, but you do it with love. Pure love, the 33. A good example of pure love and being that pure love uh, expression, Jordan from Waters Above Crypto, he, the way he expresses and projects his ideas onto the world stage, he's got the 33rd birth card. His his birthday is the seven of diamonds, which is the 33rd card. So there's, it's, it's in line with the 33, even though he's on a 33 life path. He's exuberating this 33 energy. And if you're a fan of his work and his podcast, he does it so eloquently and he does it with a lot of love and passion. That's the true essence of what a 33 is all about. He's a perfect example of that. And he's living through the epitome of this. The male-female combined together, forming an androgynous blend, Realizing that it's a symbiotic relationship. We're, we're all male, female, all of us inside. You're going to have one dominant over the other. And that's going to depend on your rising sign as well. All right. So those are the life paths in the tarot. I hope each and every one of you got a taste of what it's like to have your soul contract. And it's again, it's just a piece of your code, your source code. Just a piece of it. Okay. Let me shuffle these tarot cards. But again, you know, this soul contract and, you know, numerology, my course coming out, I'll, I'll break down what are called like the soul urge and the heart's desire. And this is breaking up the consonants. You know, if you can, if you're a decoder and you want to, you know, do this now, you can take your name, remove all the vowels, put it into the calculator and see what number you get. And the consonants are typically going to represent your ego. And the vowels will represent your spirit. <clears throat> I 
All right. But again, I just want to be very crystal clear with all of you. There is no number better than any other number. Every number has a job to do. Essentially, if you look at everything as an archetype, you'll have more keys to the kingdom because that's exactly how this reality works. Every number is like friends with the other numbers and it's, it's endless. I mean, you could just take the numbers one to a hundred and imagine these numbers are all personalities. They're all, they're like me and you. Like, oh, hey, there's number one. Oh, hey, there's number 32. And you get all the 100 numbers in a room and they all get to hang out and they're drinking and smoking and whatever else they're doing. Well, what kind of conversations would they be having? <clears throat> well, I feel like this is how this is, our reality works. Numbers are archetypes. And uh, when you can let down your guard and be a little vulnerable and realize that Yes, you're special. But inside this self-contained system, you're not special. You're part of the self-contained system. So in your personal life, you're very special. And it's a contradiction, right? But in this world that is almost 8 billion people, and you're up against all these other people, everybody's special. So what does that make you when you go up against all these other special people? The same. Okay. Woo. All right. So let's um, get my phone here. Let's see. Hang on a sec, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Let's pop the... Whoop, there we go. All right, so I'm going to take a few phone calls. Let's get some newbies in here. Those of you that want to try to call in, it's WhatsApp only, no phone calls. This is my WhatsApp number. I just popped it up on the screen. <clears throat> and uh, when you call in, let's keep it short, okay? Have respect. Let's keep them short and uh, concise to the point. What do you want to talk about? What do you want to ask? Um, let's not go into, you saw a deer up on the mountain and, you know, not that I don't want to hear about these stories, but let, what's your question? Let's get into your questions, not your life story or the symbols you saw or anything like that. Okay. Before we have any callers come in, just kind of give you some announcements. If you haven't heard, uh, Jason Brashears from Archaics.com has agreed to, excuse me, has agreed to um, do a podcast simulation theory part three uh, by popular demand. And uh, this time we're going to be um, going over some of your questions. I'm going to go through all the questions uh, in the comment section of part one and part two and try to pull these out and, you know, break them all down and get the very tip of the iceberg questions, but we're going to be really, we're going to be doing that. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, Malibu Moon, I want to know more about the Great Pyramid being the North Node. Um, yeah, maybe. I just... I don't really have anything to say on that because the North Node moves around so much. Um, but... The North Node, really, the North Node is really special. When I do readings for people and I talk about the North Node, I bring in the Vedic and we talk about Rahu. And I feel Rahu does a better job at describing how you show up because you can then take the Vedic chart, otherwise known as the sidereal, and you can look at the Nashakra that is linked to, which is like the, the micromanagers of each zodiac sign. These are the star seeds. And you can get a better grasp of what your... Uh, your your causes. I feel like the North Node, the Dragon's Head, otherwise known as the Dragon's Head, that's your cause. And I describe this like the boat on the water. The boat would be the North Node. And the boat's desire is to just cruise across the lake or the ocean. It doesn't care about the wake that it leaves behind. Anybody gets caught up in that wake, well, so be it. So your Rahu slash your dragon's head slash your north node is the cause of your chart. It's where you're going to really be driven to go towards. And you should know, you know, where that dragon's head is and then what degree it's at. And then not only read the dragon's head in the north node tropical, but read the Rahu in your sidereal. All right, so I'm pulling the plug on the phone. So no more callers, because nobody called in. That's totally fine. Everybody missed their chance. Everybody's scaredy cat. Somebody wants to come on the phone. That's okay, because it's getting late anyway. 12.29, and I'm going to just do a collective card pull. So... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. My, my phone's WhatsApp only, so it didn't work tonight. No big deal. I don't want to just sit, sit there and wait on the phone. Let's, let's pay more attention to you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So, let's, uh, let's jump into a collective card pull. I'm going to call tonight. I'm, I'm hungry anyway. All I had was like a salad and some fruit this morning. Wait a minute, we got... Let me just... All right, I'll give it a second chance. Let me, re let me reset my phone. Hang on, folks. I'll give it five minutes. Hang on, I'm trying to... Now, this phone I have right here that I'm using my WhatsApp on, it's on its way out. It's been a good phone. It's an it's a great Samsung S7. It's it's a 2017 phone, but it's a, it's been a grand phone. But it's on its way out, and it's my my backup phone, and it's just not working like it used to. Yeah, I don't eat as much food as I used to. Uh, I don't I don't need it as much. Um, you know, I'm very comfortable in the way I feel and look. Um, and I just eat when I feel like I'm supposed to eat. So, yeah, I just don't think my phone is... Uh... All right. So let's just move towards the collective card pull because I want to kind of end this short. I'm, I'm hungry and it's been a fun ride tonight for all of you. Okay. So that's the end of the phone call. Uh, take that off of there. 
All right. So let's do the collective card poll. I haven't done. I haven't done a show in three weeks. So that for, to end this ran, uh, to end this random thoughts, what's your question number thirty six? Um, l- let's do a collective card poll. And since we haven't done one in a while, this one's going to be simple. I've already shuffled the cards. Um, and it's if you're new to this. The collective conscious card pull. I typically do three cards, but it doesn't necessarily have to be stapled to that. But normally I do three. And what we all do here is we come together collectively and we focus on a certain idea, construct, or question. And I think the best thing to do to make it very generalized is to kind of just like, what's in store for us coming up in the very near future? You know, the big thing on the world stage in September is Rosh Hashanah. And whether or not you believe in that construct doesn't make a difference because a lot of people do. And essentially that's magic, right? But I feel like even if you just eliminate religion, just eliminate these ideas of religion and you focus on just like we're coming up to September soon. It will be here very soon. And I personally feel 2022 is a very, very big year. Big for change. And I'm excited about it. Because I think we're all waiting. It's like, you know it's coming. You know something's coming. And a lot of you are just like, can we just get it over with? And I think the reason why we get into these mindsets is because you see we're we're focused on them so i'm just going to suggest like yeah i feel like something big is going to happen this year beyond big but i'm not revolving my life around that and for those of you that like why am i in mexico i'm not here because i'm running from anything i'm here because i'm in paradise That's the main reason why I'm here. I'm in paradise. I live two blocks from the beach. I got everything within walking distance. It's a great town. That's why I'm here in Mexico. But anyway, I think if we just release the whole expectation, like the reset, who cares? It's going to come. It's going to come. Don't fear death anymore. If it's part of your code to pass on, then it's part of your code. Okay. So next, what's the next part of my game? Now what do I get to become? If that's really what's going to happen. So I think people that have a, a shitty code and a lot of the shitty code that people get are because they do it to themselves. And then you would say, oh, well, what do you mean? I, I didn't think we could do anything. Well, I'm not saying that. I think something's controlling us remotely. And we may, we may all have a player that's controlling us remotely. <laughs> and when you become in tune with it, you become more of that and less of down here. But anyway, these are, are concepts that I don't really want to get into right now. But nonetheless, the, the, the question I would want to pose to all of you is like, what's... Like, what should we, what's the thing to be focusing on? What's coming down the pike for all of us? What's coming with no expectations, nothing. Just let's have fun with this. All right, let's just have fun with this. So I'm going to crank up the music like that for 30 seconds. I'm going to shuffle the cards as I'm going through the 30 seconds. And I just want you to think about personally for you. And then for the world, like, where are we going? And then the cards are going to speak. Now, I don't know if the cards are going to speak based upon our collectively coming together, but you get the point. So the question is, the concept is, the idea is, we're now in the month of June we got July, August, September. We have this the fall coming up, the harvest time. 2022, I think it's a big year. What's happening? What's coming? Exciting times. All right? So let's, 30 seconds, crank up the music. 
Think about these ideas and these constructs, and then we're going to pull some cards. I'm going to shuffle while we're doing that. You had some time to think about that. I hope you were thinking about that. Like, where, what's going on? We're in June. June 12th now here in Mexico. Sunday. What's, what's, what's going to happen? What's happening? Let's see if we can get these cards to interpret to all of us. So I'm going to do this right on camera, all of you. I've already shuffled them. There's the shuffle. All right. So we're going to pull the middle of the card, a middle of the deck. Okay, we're going to pull the middle of the deck. We're going to look at the bottom of the deck and the top of the deck. So at the bottom of the deck, <laughs> the seven of swords. This right here, straight up means deception. Doing things to serve your own needs. Essentially, this is tied to the number 46, which is the game of life. 46 is tied to the tree of life. 46 is tied to Matt Groening's birthday. Matt Groening, born on the 46th day of the year. The Simpsons. What color do you see as the major color for this card? What color are the Simpsons characters? See, it's all connected. But anyway, there's the first uh, piece of this. Let's now go to the middle of the deck. I'm going to keep them nice and tight. And we're just going to pull right from the as dead center as I can possibly get it. <clears throat> All right. So keep this tight. Let's just get the... We're going to go to the dead center. There's the dead center. I'm going to pull a card up. And what do we have? We have the Ten of Wands. What does the Ten of Wands mean? It means responsibility. Not just responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. It means heavy responsibility. Taking the world upon your shoulders, responsibility. The Ten of Wands is the Ten of Clubs. The Ten of Clubs is the 23rd card in the deck. 23 represents the words in numerology such as crown, blood, and history. Think about that. The word history is linked to this card right here. So we have deception, doing things to serve your own needs, which is tied to the demiurge, doing whatever it takes to keep you in the game, and then tied to history. Pretty interesting. And then now we're going to get the last card at the very end of the deck. Right here. Right here, this card. The end of it. <laughs> to match these two cards. So here's the last card. And we have the chariot. So let's get all these three cards out. So what's coming down the pike? Like what's going to happen to humanity? What are we looking at? There's the three cards right there. Should get them, get them. There they are right there. Seven of Swords, Ten of Wands, and the Chariot. The Chariot means it's moving fast, but it's analyzing everything. Remember the seven life paths. The Chariot is card number seven. It's the great analyst. It's tied to Saturn and Libra, so it means justice. You're going to analyze 
and you will provide the justice. You will balance the scales out. So to me, what this is saying is, is that perhaps the, um, the deception and, you know, the dark age will change its course. There will be great responsibility for all of us at that point. And it will not only move fast, but it will provide the scales of justice to make the changes on the world stage. Let me just get an addition of these. It would be card number. Let me just add them up. Seven plus 32 plus. Uh, hang on a sec, folks. That's right, 57. Yeah. So. When you add these three cards up. I don't know if you can see my calculator. There's the three cards added up. Look what, look what number it gives you. 96. That's the yin yang. See the 57 at the end? The 57 is going to be this card right here. It's tied to the simulation. So we, we now can say, that I can confidently tell you, this is the simulation, and the simulation does whatever it takes to keep the game running. But yet the simulation is going to change, and that change is going to be taking the world upon your shoulders. This, this can mean, you know, the history being changed. Crown, blood, history, they're all 23. This is tied to the number 23. This is the 32nd card in the deck. 32 means duality. This card means duality. So we have the simulation. Whoops. We have the simulation and doing whatever it takes to keep you involved in Maya, the illusion. But then we have the 32. This is duality. Keep, trying to keep you here, and then you're going to have the changing of the guards with the chariot and the fast moving and duality right there. You get the duality on the cards, the chariot. And they all add up to the number 96. You see that? Again, the cards are spoken. That's yin yang, folks. I mean, you can't get any more clear. Is that like what, what's coming down the pike? Well, the changing of the guards, what these three cards mean. Yeah, and balances in the chariot. Absolutely. Because it's the scales. So the scales are going to balance the game back out again. Because it's pretty heavy lopsided right now, the game. But I mean, you know, this is the 57th or 56th card in the deck. It's tied to the simulation. This card right here is tied to the Truman. The Truman Show is this card, folks. This was the bottom the Truman Show is this card right here. Truman Show equals 57. Days of Our Lives. The Soap Opera equals 57. Enter the Dragon equals 57. It's tied to my birth card. This card is the game of life. This is tied to the Simpsons show. They predict a lot of stuff. So this was the bottom. And then the middle was the 32nd card in the deck. 31, 32. Tied to Pi and tied to Duality. And picking up the burden, the obligations, changing history, and then balancing that out with the chariot and moving fast, I might add, to do it. Ruled, this is a card ruled by Saturn, Father Time, and Libra, the scales, right there. Right there. So the cards have spoken, and it's, they, add, they add up to the number 96. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So there you have it, folks. The tarot speaks once again and does not disappoint. Does not disappoint. So I'm just going to suggest to all of you to do whatever it takes to disconnect from the static and the static is the dirty laundry and the dirty laundry is the news and the mainstream and the, the latest craze on the world stage and the popular stuff. Stay away from that. And be consciously aware of what you're giving your energy to, what you're talking about. Living into a high state of gratitude, being a gratitude junkie. Like, the, like a lot of you, it's, it's your evening time. It's like it's 12.45 a.m. here. 
So one of the last things that the majority of you will be doing after this broadcast is brushing your teeth. So, as I have said so many times, when you're brushing your teeth, why don't you give thanks to your teeth? Because those teeth have chewed food for you your entire life. And you may have never acknowledged your teeth. Start acknowledging everything around you. Because life is all about acknowledgement. That's what this whole reality is based upon. Magic is all about acknowledgement. I acknowledge you, you acknowledge me. And then we group up, we acknowledge groups. Then we acknowledge organizations. Then we acknowledge states and governments. That's how they stay alive, through acknowledgement. Oh yeah, I acknowledge that. Stop acknowledging that stuff. Take it off your list. It's not going anywhere. But the more and more people do this concept, it will cease to exist because it's not acknowledged anymore. We're in for big change, folks. Whether that's going to be uh, a more dystopian world, which most definitely could be. You just, you got to roll with it and you got to realize that nothing's permanent. So if we end up going into a down cycle, m worse off than it is, that's just the cycle we're going through. We can't be bitter about it and angry about it. When you're in the now moment and you're acknowledging this reality for what it is, everything's inside this self-contained system, you know that if we're in a down cycle, it's what's next but an up cycle. Personally, there's also this aspect of this, if you go through the biblical stuff, there's this, pe this false cry of peace and security. And imagine that justice comes to the world. Imagine you wake up tomorrow on Monday and in the, you, you, you get a phone call from your friends because you're not paying attention to the static. Somebody texts you something and they're like, did you hear such and such got arrested and they're being tried for treason and war crimes and all this stuff. There's going to be a lot of people that will literally be cheering this on they will be so happy that these people are getting what they feel to be justice and they will partake in that yeah i, I love it yeah they're finally getting what they deserve and you're, you're you're not only feeding you're not only giving that more energy number one but you're partaking in that static See, I feel you don't, you shouldn't be partaking in that static. You take your power back. Because it, whatever's going to happen is going to happen with or without your blessings. It's going to happen with or without your blessings. So, make your own waves in this world, ladies and gentlemen. Take your power back. Create your own bubble. Create your own life based upon your concepts, not what the popular vote is basing it upon. Don't, don't plant a tree or a garden because you're afraid that there's going to be food shortages. Don't go build a house because you're afraid there's going to be a wood shortage. Don't go rush off somewhere because you're afraid that a bomb's going to get dropped or you know something like that. I mean, yeah, if you, feel, if you feel like, if you live near a volcano and you feel like the volcano's going to erupt, that's different. But don't stake your game based upon their game. All right. Okay. So I'm going to finalize this the same way that I started it. That's with this great song by Shock Therapy. I think it's, it's a digital shock. It's rock instrument musical number five. And for this episode, what's your question number 36? My name is Logan as your tour guide. Thanks in each and every one of you for showing up on this podcast. Much love to everyone out there on the world stage. Until next time, we will see you later. <laughs>